Hi guys, this is Christopher John Parafina, and on behalf of Group 4, this is our video presentation of our report entitled Gender as a Determinant for Academic Achievement. Hope you enjoy your video and thank you so much for stopping by. Our Heavenly Father, the fount of all goodness and grace, the cause of wisdom, the source of intelligence, we welcome you, O Lord, to this auspicious gathering of your beloved, who continuously give you thanks for every opportunity to learn something new and become fruitful to the works of your creation. We humbly come to you, not because we are worthy, but because we find ourselves in need of you, who is our strength and our hope, to continue despite the challenges we face in health, prosperity, and our solidarity with one another. We pray that today's gathering made possible by the grace of advancements in technology and social media, become successful in its endeavors so we can offer it back to you as our humble offering to honor you, glorify you, and love you through our deeper connection with everyone. May we find bliss in today's session and become more productive children and co-creators of the earth. This we ask and pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, so this is the report of um, Group 4. And our topic is about gender as a determinant for academic achievements. I'd like to introduce our group leader, Mr. Aristea Villaflor. Na merong kasabihan, life is not a problem to be solved, but a reality to be experienced. Sir Aris, take it away. Good afternoon po. Yes, Sir Aris, good afternoon. Sir Aris, please tell us more about yourself. Good afternoon po. I'm again Mr. Aristeo Villaflor from Ginyangan, Quezon and currently teaching in Ginyangan Senior High School. Thank you, sir. Na nag-iiwan ng kasabihan. Na nag-iiwan ng kasabihan na <laughs> life is not a problem to be solved but a reality to be experienced. Ah, Contest at all. Thank you. Thank you. Maraming maraming salamat po, Sir Aris. Ayan. At ang humamo <laughs> ating second um, our presenter po for today ay si Ms. Hannah Arguelles. Ms. Hannah, please take it away. Good afternoon everyone. I'm Hannah Arguelles from Barangay Talisay, San Andres, Quezon. At nag-iiwan ang kasabihang. It does not matter how slowly go, you go as long as you do not stop. Keep dreaming, keep trying, and keep hoping. Aja, aja, fighting! Wow, congratulations! Yay! <laughs> I like that. Yay. All right. Maraming maraming salamat po, Miss Hara. At ako po ang inyong mentor. Um, ang pangalang ko po ay Christopher John C. Palatina. Uh, ten years teaching na po, dito po. And nag-iiwan ng kasabihan. Let anything or anyone oh. steal your shine. So ngayon pong araw, ito turn over po po muna kayo kay Sir Aris para po sa kanyang first part of the report. Sir Aris, take it away. Okay, so good afternoon again, classmates. Good afternoon, Dr. Melchor B. Espiritu. Yes, good uh, afternoon. Yes, sir. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. So we are the group four and we are assigned to discuss, present to you, determinants of academic achievements in gender. So, determinants of academic achievement in gender with subtopic. So, I'm going to discuss the achievement differences between males and females 
and also the feminization of teaching profession. And Ma'am Hana will go to discuss the issues of socialization and the pedagogical methods used in classrooms. And Sir Chris will also discuss the single sex versus co-ed schooling and or classrooms. So let's start with the determinants of academic achievement. Achievement differences between males and females. So one of the out of school or the external factor influence the differences in educational achievements of girls and boys is gender socialization. Agree po ba kayo dun? So what is gender socialization? So gender socialization refers to process of learning gender appropriate behaviors and forms. And this is the process that usually part of primary socialization at home. Function lists such as Parsons will suggest one of the main function of the family unit is that to ensure that male and female are socialized into a gender appropriate roles. What is often referred to as the sex role theory, Talcott Parsons, in which he said, males will be socialized into instrumental role, copying the behavior of their fathers, who provide income from work and discipline for children, are socialized into appropriate roles as express, expressive role, while girls would be socialized into expressive roles through observing their mother behaviors, offering care and nurturing the emotional needs of the family. To start with it, it could help to explain the achievement differences within the male and female in education. Historically, this could help the differences between males and females in education in the period up to the late 1970s as girl will be perceived to be less interested in education and boys will be perceived as needing more attention in order to achieve. Hence, the historical underachievement of girls, but in recent years, gender socialization as well the different rates of achievement of boys and girls have changed in this and in this presentation we can look at why this has improved girls achievements over the past 30 years so how does gender socialization impact on educational achievement Firstly, as part of their socialization, they more controlled the males in terms of space and time. This allows them to develop a bedroom culture through which they practice their literacy skills by reading, writing, and communicating with others. Reading is seen as a feminine activity, also due to gender socialization as for the most part. It is the mothers that read to their children, whilst fathers may also read to their daughters, but they are more likely to engage in physical activities with their sons, such as playing football, basketball. The superior literacy skills that they develop enables them to have a head start when it comes to school and shapes the subject they may choose and later life with more females choose in subjects that require higher level of literacy secondly girls are socializing to be more passive and obedient again this is in part 
to you to gendered expectations to female behavior but the the impact of this is in the schools females are more likely to be perceived as the ideal pupil due to their polite nature that develop through socialization and this leads to having higher expectations placed upon them in terms of schoolwork and they more likely to be motivated and engaged by teachers. A third consideration is the process of canalization. Girls receive toys that encourage them to be caring and nurturing and it is reflected in the subject they choose to study. The subject choices. Boys on the other hand are given toys to more instrumental in nature such as construction codes. This leads to them choosing. Choosing what are perceived to be harder and more scientific subjects partly because of their value to the economy, while girls pick softer subjects in areas of arts and humanities that are often unfairly judged to be easier. So let's have the evidence of gender socialization impacting on achievement. What evidences of gender socialization impacting on achievement? Well, across all social classes, in all ethnic groups, girls perform consistently better than boys, which would suggest that if part socialization of girls and boys is a factor in differences in achievement. However, we can argue this is a merely a correlation and it does not improve the gender socialization is the exclusive reason. However, trends such as the subjects like males and females study in education do align with traditional roles that males and females are socialized into. Further, what with recent changes in the ways that girls in particular are socialized into a more gender neutral role. This is coincided with the shift of subjects of a girls are studying more girls become an interest in science and maths. This is supported by the non movements of boys into subjects traditionally seen as being part of the feminine domain which coincides with boys still being socialized into traditional masculine roles. Another consideration is the changes there have been to gender socialization over the past 40 years. The changes to gender socialization impact on educational achievement. With the rise of feminism, more girls have witnessed their mothers in paid than ever before and may have seen their mothers have successful careers. As a consequence, this is changes ideas that girls have about their future. This can be highlighted as you looking at Shoe Sharp research with girls learning that mothers can develop develop careers as well as or instead of taking on the housewife and mother role. Other in initiatives to promote gender equality have led to change in girls' socialization. This girl can a sporting initiative. More girl has challenged notions that athleticism and sports are part of the masculine domain. 
while there is a wider availability of children's book that celebrate the achievements of women. Whereas, in the past, girls would have to be content with reading about women domestic roles or princess and princesses being rescued by princess as outlined by Lovin. So that is the changes to gender socialization in impact in educational achievement. So of course, we need to evaluate these ideas and we, can, we cannot take them on face value alone. So socialization has changed in the 21st century which challenges assumptions that are made about girls being passive and obedient. As each generation of women passes down the ideas of female empowerment to their daughters, the norms and values of gender socialization change. Increasingly, we have seen girls being socialized and to believe in education is essential in obtaining a career base. On the research by Francis and Mac Roby, and this had led parents to socialize girls into being more ambitious and have higher expectations of their daughters. However, despite these changes, and the improvement in girls' educational achievement, the gender pay gap. But estimates suggest it may be another 30 years before we see real quality of employment. The fact that girls are cheap higher than boys across social class and ethnicity may suggest the, so the gender socialization is a factor. However, this also assumes that gender socialization is consistent across social classes and ethnic groups. Cultural differences between social classes and ethnic groups may view girls' education in girls' socialization very differently from others. So later it will be discussed by Mamhana. So it's a general generalization to suggest that socialization of girls will be consistent across groups. And finally, to what extent is gender socialization by home life? And to what extent is it controlled by schools, our schools, more capable of shaping girls and boys into their expected gender roles and females? And would this make gender socialization more consistent across class and ethnicity? So as we look for the word study or other study in a world image in the study of Clark Lee Goodman and other educational statistics and worldwide media have reported a clear gender gap in academic achievement between males and females, with boys lagging behind girls in terms of subject, grades, secondary school graduation and tertiary level enrollment and completion. And the research from Max Hub and Race argue that male underachievement is a topic of critical importance both in Malaysia and around the world. In their research, they found that girls were outperforming boys in almost all subject domains, whether they were science or non-science majors. 
They also pointed out that the situation were seen as student progress through the different levels of education with eventual tertiary level matriculation reflecting a 65 to 35 percent enrollment of females relative to males. In another study, exploring gender differences in achievement through student voices, voice critical insight and analysis, the, uh, the findings of this study the primary reasons students gave for gender differences in achievement, the majority of students felt that the trust towards female empowerment and gender equity or the greater focus of females on academic achievement was responsible for their higher level of performance in secondary school. It is interesting and instructive to note that students generally believe that female success over their male counterparts is related to the current societal movement that drives female motivation and the quest for gender parity. It also suggests that while female empowerment drives are aiding girls in academic achievement, they might also be perceived as immobilizing boys. The next participants believe that certain negative influence in society impacted males and under, undermined their academic achievement. This factor that speaks to the permeability of negative societal forces on the psyche of males in the classroom. Also, the study stated that some male students focus on extracurricular activity rather than on schoolwork. They see this focus on extracurricular activity as another primary factor that weakens their academic achievement so that is the latter finding is that similar to that Maxub and race in 2010. So in, uh, in this 14th National Statistics Conference in Crown Plaza, Manila Galleria in October 1 to 3, 2019 by Dr. Dina S. Ocampo, Reframing Gender Disparities in Basic Education in the Philippines. So this is the paper. So the objective of this paper is to interrogate how education data is collected, presented, and interpreted, particularly on conclusion about gender disparity. So we can see here in the diagram, in the figure one, the the female is the blue one and the male is the red one. So what do the data tell us about the secondary education? Oh, so this is the revised historical data on educational performance. School year 2007 to 2008, 2013 to 2015. So the not grade three, not grade six, and not grade 10. So what do this data mean? Gender disparities observable in the educational performance data. However, score differences are small. Data for boys and girls need to improve and reflect better school participation and learning. Gender differences in scores are observable, but these have not been explained or resolved over time. So prevailing interpretation of the gender disparities in basic education since 1999 up to 2014. So 1999 to 2005, 
historical gender performance in almost all key education outcome indicators, registered an advantage of females over males. In 2002-2005, boys drop out more than girls. More girls graduate from high school. More girls got college. A nation of male underachievers. 1999 to 2005, girls are becoming more educated. Girls are outperforming boys in enrollment, dropout, and achievement. 1996-2012, boys disadvantage in basic education, lag in enrollment, or survival and completion rate. So in 2011, Filipino boys under achievement is driven by parents and teachers, low academic expectation for boys, the, econo the economy, viability of boys, passive classroom experience, gender bias, stereotyping, and lack of learning materials. So for 2012 to 2013, for school year, girls outperform boys in all education efficiency indicators. Girl have, girls have also been outperforming boys in terms of national achievement tests. And in 2014, Consistent underperformance of boys in key education indicators should be addressed as priority gender issue. So this is the paper. So critic of interpretation of educational participation data. So treats boys and girls as homogeneous groups. All boys are lagging behind and all girls are doing well. Pits boys and girls in position to one another as group, boys versus girls. Describes boys' disadvantage, the boys' underachievement in education, and alarmist terms are as a problem that needs urgent fixing. A nation of male underachievers. So this is from National Convention on Statistics in 20. 19 so that they so that is the gender uh, differences in achievement uh, in achievement between males and females so let's now move on and on, on another topic the feminization of the teaching profession. So the feminization of the teaching profession. So what is the feminization of education? Working in the school process that has had an impact of, on gender differences in education over past 30 years has been the feminization of education but what do what do sociologists mean by the feminization of education there are a number of ways in which education has been more suited to girls achievement and the first of this is teaching and learning strategies there's been a shift from more individualized traditional learning strategies to collaborative and cooperative strategies in recent year in education, which is said to put girls at an advantage over boys in education systems due to their better communication skills and a more collaborative nature. A second factor is Family on feminization in education has been changed to the way in which pupils are assessed. The forms of assessment. Mitzos and Brown, as well as Garrett, have suggested that the improvement in girls' achievement rates have conceded 
with the introduction of coursework, which, though to put girls at an advantage, as they more organized, more conscious, more likely to seek help from teaching and planning and preparing them boys. A third factor is the increase in female teachers and the decline of male ones. Teachers act as educated role models for pupil and the absence of male teachers this boy's disadvantage, while the increased proportion of female teachers acts as a form of motivation for girls. You de their education appro appreciates and respects feminine characteristics. Indeed, a fourth factor is the feminization of, edu feminization of education is how education itself has become part of the feminine domain. Particularly, primary and secondary level with more opportunities for females brought about as part of changes to national curriculum and subject initiatives such as GIS and WISE. So why does the feminization of education affect if education has become feminized, we need to consider who is going to affect. For girls, have been many benefits of the feminization of education. They achieve higher than boys. And as a result of having more female role models in the classroom throughout their education, especially in the formative primary years. For boys, however, the organization of schooling puts them at a disadvantage. A lack of male role models in primary education, specifically, and the continuous assessment that does not favor their skill sets put that puts them at disadvantage. Boys tend to perform better on wall or high risk assessment, such as linear and, of course, examinations. Furthermore, the feminization of education lead to boys reject in school, as it does not fit in with the hegemon hegemonic masculinity main that is often reinforced through peer groups. So suggesting that the feminization of education's impact on the differences in gender achievement needs to be backed up with evidence. So in Swirl and Grade all have highlighted that the intersection between girls and female teachers is generally positive which supports the view female role models having beneficial impacts on the education of girls. Both Mitz Osam and Brown Gerard found in their respective research that girls' improvement has been in part due to the changes to assessment, namely the introduction of coursework that allows girls more conscious to nature and true preparation to come to the forum. This can be linked or differences in such teams between males and females with girls often underestimating their own ability and therefore working harder on coursework drops and seeking help from teachers in the preparation of coursework. And trends in teaching learning assessment strategies have seen increased focus in recent years and cooperative and collaborative strategies for improving grades, something which sits firmly with the feminine domain. So uh, we have the assessment more on strategies in cooperative or group work 
or collaborative strategies. So evidence to support feminization as detrimental to boys. So feminization of education is not is not just benef- benefit benefit. Uh, it's not just benefit girls, but has also been detrimental to boys' education, according to research. But Skelton's Sewell, 2011, have highlighted the crisis the crisis of recruitment in education, the lack of male role models, and education as having a detrimental impact on boys' educational achievement. Education has become dominated by female with the workforce comprising around 75% of female teachers and this demonstrate the boys that education is best suited to females rather than males. Although it can be argued that the percentage of males in higher position in education such as head teachers and senior leadership role is higher than a teaching level. Interaction between boys and teachers tend to be less positive than the interactions between girls and teachers with Francis amongst others that have highlighted the negative attention that boys receive. And finally, it is though the boys learn more by doing that they are more kinesthetics taking their learning the girls who have a better understanding of written work and more accomplished at listening than males. Of course, we have to be careful here to consider the validity of these stereotypes, particularly in contemporary society. So later, Ma'am Hana will also discuss the stereotyping between the two, between the gender. So we need also to evaluate the debate that the feminization of education has led to improvements in girls' achievement and cause what used to underachieve. And firstly, boys are still achieving. That's not the rate that girls are. As a consequence, Jackson et al. 2010 now have suggested that there is too much emphasis on boys comparative underachievement to females and education of policy and the focus should not be on how to improve boys achievement but rather on how to make education and society more equal men still hold higher position in wider society there is a logic to this argument We've mentioned several times throughout this series about the gender pay gap in the unequal distribution of power between males and females in the higher position. We also need to consider recent changes in assessment that have a, it had an impact on boys' achievements. The changes to their near exams from 2017 have led an increased percentage of boys achieving higher grades at a level compared to girls for the first time in almost three decades. However, there are significantly more girls studying a level 
of presence. Some would argue that is due removal of coursework, while others such as go out we suggest that coursework only make up a small percentage of a pupil's final grades and therefore girls will still be achieving in exams that concludes this so that is the differences between the achievement between females and males and the feminization of education. Thank you po. Maraming maraming salamat po, Ginoong Aristeo Puno Villaflor. Ayan. So, uh, classmates, let's move forward to our second reporter. But before that, Ms. Hannah is re uh, preparing her presentation. Before that, let me remind everybody to please change your nickname uh, sa Zoom natin from Change it to po sa surname, uh, full na uh, first name, and your uh, middle initial. Okay. Miss Hannah, are you ready? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Miss Hannah. Good afternoon, everyone. Kamusta po kayo? Gising pa ba? Gising na gising. <laughs> yes, okay, ma'am. Sige po. Afternoon po. So welcome po sa ating Okay po. Welcome po sa ating klase. Today let us uh, this afternoon let us talk about the issues on socialization. It is the topic assigned to me. I'm again I'm Hannah Argilias. Yeah, next po sir. So I would like to be, I know, to make this reporting into an interactive one. So, kung pwede po mahingi po yung inyong participation. Okay lang Sige po, po ma'am. Okay po. Sige, Sige po. po. Okay, okay po. po. So, ayan po. Before we proceed to the lesson proper or the reporting proper, let us have a motivation. So, I have here a set of pictures with the corresponding words or meanings will be shown in the following slides. Each picture has its word phrase, sounds like syllables, that when combined together create a word related to our topic. So remember po, ating topic is about the issues on socialization. So there are set of pictures and these pictures, may mga syllables po or sounds like syllables tayong makukuha doon. Tapos, i-coconnect po natin siya sa second picture or the third pictures. Pag pinagsama-sama po sila, makakabuo po tayo ng word or a phrase na related po sa ating topic. So, let's have an example first. Konti lang po to. Para lang po, pampa-brainstorming pampa lang. Para, para magising-gising tayo. Ayan pa, example. I will give a clue kapag po nahihirapan kayo o magsabi lang po kayo. Like for this example, the first picture which is a girl. Yan po, ang clue po diyan, feelings. It is about the feelings of the girl. With that gesture, ano pong masasabi natin kapag ganyan yung gesture natin? Ano masasabi natin? Ano pong may isip natin na word? You can suggest po kung ano po yung naisip niyo word. Pwede po tayong mag-unmute ng mic. Feeling mind. joy? <laughs> Angel? <laughs> Sige po, isip lang po another. Feeling. Feeling. Feelings po siya, feelings. Overwhelmed? Overwhelmed? Overwhelmed. Ayun po, medyo ano? malapit. Good? Relief? Relief! Ayan, relief. Plus? Plus si another picture natin. Yeah, religion. Yes po, paki-click paki nga po, Sir Grace. Ayan, religion. Di ba isa siya sa mga issues on socialization din, mga sobrang daming debate na nangyayari about sa religion. Kung baga nagkakaroon ng discrimination about uh, the religion, about the person's background, religion, paniniwala kasi hindi tayo nagkakaintindihan. May mga ganun, parang pinagpipilitan kasi nila yung views nila sa religion. So, that's one of the factors affecting socialization or the issues of socialization. Next, sir. Kaya niyo na po ba? Gets na po ba? Opo. Sige po. Next po. Okay. Sige, ma'am. 
Sige. Ayan po. First one, first picture, second. Next pa, sir. Third. Ayan po. Isip po kayo ng word. Or sounds like syllable. May kinalaman po yan ha, sa social issues natin. You can say any word po na ano po. Angit niyo po yung mic niyo. Sabihin niyo po. Para po may idea yung iba. Tapos sasabihin ko po kung medyo relate siya. The first picture has a 10 kilogram labeled. Ayan po. 10 kilogram. 10 kilogram. So pag sinabi po doon, ano po may isip niyo? 10 weight. kilogram. Weight. Another term for weight. Mass. Mass. Plus... The second picture? Mass. Media. Boy. Media. Very good. Sino po yun? Si? Roy. Ah, si Sir Roy. Thank you, Sir Roy. Ayan, mass medias. Ayan, another? Mass medias with S. Opo. Opo, medias. Okay. Ayan. Click nyo po, sir. Next slide. Ay, next, ano po. Sir Grace. Ayan, mass medias. Ayan po, di ba? Nakaka-apekto din siya sa socialization natin. Sobrang laking influence niya sa atin, lalo na sa mga kabataan, sa generation ngayon. Sobrang nakaka-apekto sila kung paano tayo mag-interact, paano tayo makisalamuha, socialize with other colleagues, with, uh, with the co-students because of the mass media na apekto yung behavior natin. So next, next slide po. Ayan, how about that? That set of pictures. First picture is about feelings also. Pwede po kayong mag-unmute. Sounds like, no? Sounds like, o kaya po mismo feelings po, yung word po. Okay po. Mga fear yan, ang fear. Fear, o po. Fear. Sounds like, di ba, di fear. Ano po kaya yung kasundad na picture? Connection. <laughs> Connection. <laughs> oh, malapit na po, malapit. Another term for connection. Connectivity. Connectivity. <laughs> Sige po. Keep trying. Communication, ma'am. Communication. Peer pressure po ba? Peer of knowledge. Related po siya. Di ba po yung mga computers, dun po sa second picture, computer siya na connect-connect. Another term po din is network. Cyber. 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 Network po. Ayan po. Net Paano nga po? Sirit na. <laughs> okay. Fe fear. Fear network. Opo. Kasi po fear. Sounds like fear. Sounds Plus like network. Network. Opo. fear. Network. Fear network. Okay po. Ayan po. Next. Keep guessing. Ayan po. First picture. And then the second picture. Ayan. Stereotyping. Stereotyping. Sino po yun? Ang bilis na. Christian is po. Wow, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. May, may, pag, may pag-gcash din ba ito, ma'am? <laughs> Stereotyping. <laughs> oh, so, next time, pag ano, mag-ready tayo ng pang-reward. Sa ngayon, wala pa po reward. Pero thank you po sa sagot. Sige po, next, next pa po. Next slide po. Ayan, how about that? A set of four pictures. Sipin niyo po kung ano. Social climbing. <laughs> Social climbing. Ano po siya? Pinagsama-sama po yan. Participation. Sino po yun? Sheena po. Ma'am Ma Sheena. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Good afternoon po. Uh -oh. Yan, participation. So, paano po naging participation? Party plus C plus pay plus lotion. Participation. Ayun po. Thank you po sa inyong pagsagot. So, let's... Yan po. Pwede na pong pakinit po ng mic. Ayan, socialization. Socialization. This 
describes a process which may lead to desirable outcomes, sometimes labeled moral as regards the society where it occurs. So, pag sinabi pong moral, it, it is about the right or wrong principles. So, the so- socialization din pala ay affected kung paano natin tinitingnan na tama or mali ang isang bagay. For example, if I will do this to my colleagues or to my classmates bilang estudyante, tama ba? Tama ba yung gagawin ko? So, yun po, bago tayo makapag-socialize or makapag-interact sa isang person or individuals, we think about good or right. Are we, do- are we doing good? Or are we doing bad things to our colleagues, to our classmates, or sa mga kapwa nating tao? So, ayun po, moral. Nakadepende rin po siya sa moral and socialization. Next, Individual views on certain issues, for instance, race or economics, are influenced by the society's consensus and usually tend toward what that society finds acceptable or normal. So, in socializing po, we also uh, consider if what are we doing is acceptable or normal sa society ng ginagalawan natin. Hindi po tayo basta nagso-socialize or kumikilos as a person without considering what is existing or what is normal in our community or our society. So yeah, let's talk about the different perceptions about socialization. So we have three perceptions from the social political theories, scientific research and genetic studies. First, the social political theories so according to them to the theories of political theory social political socialization provides only a partial explanation partial lang siya hindi siya mismo yung socialization ang nakakaapekto ng beliefs and human behavior kumbaga sabihin natin kasama din niyo yung parang pagkapanganak mo pa lang Meron kang nakuhang traits or attitudes from your parents kung paano ka makikisalamuha or what is your attitude toward a person? How are you going to interact with them? And then, according to, to the sociopolitical theories, agents or the people are not blank slate predetermined by their environment. So, hindi, hindi buong yung environment yung magdidikta of what of what you are or anong klaseng tao ka. Sometimes it is nature. Parang meron ka na nun, may ganun ka na innate na sa atin yun. And then scientific research, people are shaped by both social influence and genes. Yan. Social influence and genes naman po. Parehas siya. Social influence and genes. And the addition pala doon sa social political, from the word social and political, combination of social and the political policies. So, yung socialization pala natin bilang, indiv- bilang individual ay naapektuhan ng existing political policies. And then, the scientific research, second perception from the scientific research, yun nga po, social and genes naman. And thus, genetic studies, ganun din po. From the genotype or the traits that we uh, inherit from our parents and also the social influence or dun sa kung ano yung nangyayari sa paligid natin. Next slide po, sir. Yan. Factors affecting individual behavior. Yes po, pakik- pakiklik po lahat. Buong po mga ba. Ayan po. So, as an individual, there are factors affecting how we behave first we have the we have the family interest peer relationship and mass media okay lang po mag drop name ako para po hingin yung opinion niyo for this for this ano, slide paano Sige po ba ma'am. paano okay po ba nakakaapekto yung Ito, yung peer relationship, interest, mass media, and family or microsystem sa individual behavior. So, let's start with the peer relationship. 
may I call on Tantanan. <laughs> Ayun po, may I call on Yes, simulan ko po sa mga kagrupo ko para po ano din. Kay Sir Chris, Sir Christopher. How does a peer relationship affects individual behavior? Tingin mo po. Okay. All right. Um, I think peer relationship according to Vladimir Lenin, tell me your friends are and I will tell you who you are. So it has a great factor or a great effect sa, sa personality natin, development natin. Uh, kung yung mga nakakasalumuhan natin every day, eh, may mga may mga ganitong norms o may mga ganitong actuations na dadala natin siya. Kaya nga pag yes, nasinabi na maglegalig ka or maingay ka, kalog to, oh, ma- kalog, meaning to say nababarkada kasi sa ganong circle of friends. Pag napunta ka sa isang situation or pag napunta ka sa isang uh, pag ito, controlled environment, maninibago yung ibang mga taong nakakakita sa'yo kasi Opo. that na ganun ka. So, ayun, yes, up to relationship na nakaka-affect sa individual behavior ng bata at tao. Opo. Tama po. Thank you po, sir. And then sa mass media naman, how about mass media? How does it affect individual behavior? Yes, Ma'am Shine? May I call on to Ma'am Shine? Ma'am Kanimo Shine? Wala. Oh, sige po. Sir Aris. Hi, Sir Aris. Hi, Ma'am. Opo. So, Ayan. mass media, uh, it affect individual behavior. So, sabi nga po, di ba, sa mga nakikita natin, lalo na po ngayon, napaka- Napakadali na maka-apekto sa isang tao yung mga nakikita natin sa mass media. Ano yes, po? Bro. Yung mga patayan, krimen, kung ano-ano. Minsan nga pag nagpa-Facebook tayo, parang lahat pag puro negative, ah, pag puro negative, nakaka, nakakadala. Nakakadala Opo. yung... Na-adapt sides. yung, oh, yung negativity. Yung natin halimbawa, di ba nitong mga nakaraan, sa Facebook, yung puro profile picture nila, puro kandila. Parang Opo. nakaka... Bagong, Nakakalungkot nakaka yung lungkot. vibe. Uh, talagang malaki yung epekto ng mass media. Opo. Saka, ah, dagdag ko rin po. Thank you, sir. Dagdag ko rin po sa mass media. Karamihan po sa mga kabataan. Kasi po, every time we open Facebook, Instagram, yung mga social media, Nakikita nyo yung mga relationship goals, gano'n. Sana all, puro sana all, sana all, gano'n, gano'n. Naiinggit. Karamihan doon, nagkakaroon ng pressure na para ah, kailangan ko na ata mag-jowa. Ako na lang ata, walang jowa. Kailangan ko nang may ma-post na kailangan may ma-post na ako nagde-date kami nun, mga jowa. Wala man lang ako ma-flex, flex your jowa. Lalo na po sa TikTok, di ba yung mga sobrang nakaka-apekto na nandun yung pressure, tapos yung yung nagiging tingin mo sa, sa society ay naiaapektuhan. Yan, sa interest naman po tayo. How about the interest? Any volunteer? How does an interest affect individual behavior? Wala po ba? Sige po, interest. Anything that you do becomes you. So, ayun po. di ba? We often socialize with people who share the same interest with us. Kaya nga may mga kasabihan, same bird, same bird with the same feathers flock together. Kasi po, dun tayo nag stay or we often uh, socialize with people na hindi natin mararamdaman na tayo ay isolated, na OOP, kumbaga. But if we cannot relate to those persons or group, lumalayo tayo doon, hindi tayo hindi natin parang hindi tayo nagpupush sa sarili natin na mag-stick doon sa mga grupo na yun and we find for those groups or circle of friends where, when we can relate to and po, next naman is the family or microsystem, the family is the first essential cell of human society according to Pope John so ayun po, sabi niya the first essential cell. So without family, there is no socialization, no society, 
wala pong mangyayaring wala tayo, 'di ba? We all starts with the family. Do ngayon sa panahon ngayon para kino-consider na rin po na kahit hindi mo biological family, family pa din as long as it is the first or the primary factors that affects you or mold you or shape you as what you are now. Ayun po. Um, ma'am? Yes po. Next na po. Okay. Uh, addition lang po dun sa family Ay. or microsystem. Opo. Okay. So, dito binanggit siya na factors affecting individual behavior, family. So, sabi ni Pope John, the family is the first essential cell of human society. Kasi sabi nga natin na ang isang bata, pag laki niya, pag alam niya na nasa mabuting uh, influensya siya ng pamilya, parang kumbaga yung family mo, yes, good influensya sa, sa sayo, tapos uh, pinapayuhan ka ng maigi yung nanay mo tsaka yung tatay mo. So ang bata mismo, alam niya mismo kung ano yung goal niya sa life niya kasi nakikita niya doon sa family niya, doon sa pamilyang meron siya na maganda pala na ganito yung kapag may tinapos ka, tapos nakikita mo sa tatay mo tsaka sa nanay mo na maganda yung disposition nila ng buhay. So ikaw bilang isang anak, gusto mo ding maging ganun, magiging inspiration yon ng isang individual na kagaya natin na kapag may isang magandang pamilya na yun yung magiging inspiration mo later on to have a better family. And oh, also, so, may, mara, may mga may mga situation din na yung mga bata minsan madalas napapariwara or yun nga, kagaya ng yes, ibang po. reporting na ano, napupunta sa violence. Kasi nga, sa family din mismo, ano ba yung uh, environment ng bata sa loob ng bahay? So, kung Pwede niya pong madala na outside. Adap, yes, nadadala ng bata at minsan nagiging yun yung na adapt nila na hindi nila namamalayan na later on na nagiging ganun na din pala sila. Yun po. Kaya nga po. Kasi Opo. po pag minsan, di ba may mga problems na na-encounter mm. yung mga teachers sa school, Mm-mm. para malaman mo kung ano yung reason, you have to visit ganun kung ano ba nangyayari sa bahay nila, okay ba sa mm. sa bahay nila, para po madetect natin kung ano ba yung pinakang problem, ba't ganun yung performance sa school, Ba't na dito siya makasalamuha sa peer groups niya or sa mga classmates niya? So, ayan nga po, yung family rin po, microsystem. Apo, ayan pa. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Sana. Po, sir. Yes po, sir. Next Sana, slide, please. Uh, there is a yes. small microsystem. Ms. Adeline, ang pagbansang ninang na keso. <laughs> Sige po. Sige okay. po, ninang. <laughs> okay, so family. So, I believe yes, na baka laki talaga ng sa akin ha, dito sa sa apat na to, is talagang family yung pinakamalaki yung may factor sa kung ano yung isang bata. Based on my own experience, so I have four kids and lahat naman sila malalaki na. Kalos yung iba nga kasing edad nyo na yung isa. Pero based sa akin, ang laki talaga ng factor eh. Kasi mas pag-guided yung bata ng magulang, kita mo talaga yung patutunguhan ng, ng mga bata isa maganda at saka yun yung observe, na-observe ko kapag walang magulang I don't know may mga parents na rin naman tayong kaklase pero iba talaga ang iba talaga yung bata na may kumpletong pamilya kaysa dun sa batang walang walang gumagay na family and alam ko mag-a-agree yung mga halos sa atin bilang teacher kasi makikita natin yan, ma-observe natin yan sa mga estudyante natin. Pag ang isang estudyante natin ay may, may nanay, may tatay na nakapasuporta, makikita nyo yung improvement ng isang bata. Pero pag ang bata walang kainti-interest, magtanong ka sa background ng bata, ay wala kasi siyang nanay. Ay kasi yung nanay may nanay man pero nagtatrabaho, nagaano. So, iba talaga okay. ma'am yung guide ng magulang talaga. And I agree doon kay Sir kanina na kapag nakita okay. ng mga anak, yung magulang niya, yung nanay at tatay niya ay maayos, mabuti, sabi nga ni Sir kanina. Pag nakita niya na, ay si nanay ay nakatapos, ay si nanay, hindi man nakatapos, pero yung outlook na nanay at ni tatay sa, sa, sa buhay ay positive, na adapt okay. yun ng bata eh. Hanggang sa paglaki niya, yun yung nai-apply niya sa sarili niya. Kaya makikita mo ma'am, pagdating ng panahon, sino yung successful na bata? Hindi po ba yung yung may yung, magulang fully, na supportado? Yes, guided by by ano his or her family. And talagang okay. naniniwala ako na talagang family po talaga. Yung number one talaga na may pinakamalaking factor kung ano yung isang bata. 
yan po para sa akin. Okay. Thank you po, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am Annaline. Yes. Ayan nga po, yun, kahit po ako, nag-agree din po ako doon sa part na yun. Kaya lang po, katulad po nang sa magulang ko po, sa nanay ko po, struggle nila, yung existing na, yung po peer relationship na yun, yung interest, kasi po, nahihirapan din siya sa, pag, sa pagdidisiplina po, ganun, parang, Ang hirap-hirap na panatilihin ka sa bahay. Gusto mo lagi nandun ka sa labas. Ganun po yung mga laging tanang struggles nila. Struggles ma'am, ng mga can, magulang. Yes, ma'am. Can I add, ma'am? Sige kasi, po. Yes, kasi pag based uh, sa experience ko, and and I know alam niya nung iba na nasa kakilala sa akin, si Sir Aris, alam niya. Kasi yung mga anak ko talaga, meron ako ever since, yun yung naging patas ko sa kanila. Simula nung maliit sila. Okay, at at 6 o'clock in the, in the evening, kailangan nasa bahay kayo. 6 o'clock. So, may pupuntahan kayo wala, basta 6 o'clock, uuwi muna kayo sa bahay and then after, kung may pupuntahan o whatsoever, magpapaalam. So, uh, hanggang ngayon, dala nila yun na kailangan pag 6 o'clock, uuwi. O, uuwi okay. sila. Yeah, and one time yan ay na-experience nung anak ko na maliit. Siguro, excited siya, parang, ikwento ko lang ng konti, mga papahabakan ko. Parang Sige excited po. siya kasi sinun lang siya ng nakar- nakaranas mga aruling. And then, hindi siguro niya napansin na 6.30 na. So, nawawala siya. So, ibig sabihin, lampas na ng 6. Eh, syempre, nagahanap na ako. So, ipinahanap ko siya dun sa isang co-teacher ko. And then, sabi niya, ay ba, nahanap ko na naman. And then, pagbaba niya ng tricycle, talagang nanginginig siya. Kasi, alam niya, na lumampas na siya dun sa binigay ko. Okay. May then, mali din. Pa lang niya, yeah, nagsusorry na siya na kasi late na siya. So, alam ng bata, ma'am, kumbaga, nakamold na sa bata. Yun eh. Ano po? Opo. Para Since po yun sa akin, maliit ha, po. on my Opo. own experience. Opo. Opo. May yes, okay, ma'am. Open naman po tayo sa mga opinion po. Yan. Thank you po. Next na po tayo. Next slide. Thank you, ma'am Annaline. Thank you po everyone. So okay, thank you po. din po. Ayan. Next po tayo. Social classification. Ayan po. Issues on socialization na po tayo. We have for category, the social classification, stereotyping, sociocultural practices, and exposure to media. O social classification, it is a group of people in a stratified hierarchy based on social power, wealth, educational attainment, and other criteria. So it it talks about the the social classification. Kung ano po ba yung anong klase ba yung buhay mo? For example, influencer ka social may social power ka wealth and mataas yung educational attainment mo nakakaapekto rin po siya sa clo- social classification kasi po ang nangyayari nagkakaroon po ng discrimination for example din po sa mga estudyante di ba kapag po mayayaman dati po ang tingin ko rin dati pag po mayayaman ayan ano yan product ng private school sa par- private school nag-aaral kasi po may tuition and then sa sa mga public naman po, um, dito lang kami sa ano, public kasi libre tuition, walang babayaran, ganun parang government, ano po, provided by the government. And then yung nang, ang nangyayari po parang, ah, mga ano naman yan, parang nangyayari, sinasabihan na hindi sila ganun kagagaling or hindi sila, hindi kaya makipagsabayan kasi kakaunti, limited daw yung alam or limited lang yung knowledge. Pero na, dito po, napatunayan na mas marami pong mga galing din po sa public school yung kaya makisabay or mag-perform ng mas excellent, excellent performance po kaysa po doon sa mga private school. Kaya po, doon lang po yung mga ganun thinking ng mga dati-dati pa nung no, no, no mga grade, grade school pa lang ako, ganun po yung tingin ko. Tas para pong nagkakaroon ng na-intimidate ka pag lalaban ka. Oh, kalaban ko yung ano, yung kalaban ko yung mga matatalino tapos na sa private school. So nagkakaroon po ng social classification. Tas stereotyping naman po, a fixed over generalized belief about a particular group or class of people. Yan, isa-isayin po natin ang discussion later sa mga susunod na slide. Social cultural practices practices it is the distinctive spiritual material, intellectual and emotional features to characterize a society or a social group. And the exposure to media is a true social exchange and social comparison. Young people orient their behavior related to that of others. Next slide po tayo, Sir Chris. And po, how social class affects socialization? Ayan po. 
Ayan po, kung mababasa niyo po dun sa comics na image na nilagay ko po dun sa slides. Ayan po. Can you give insight po kung our interpretation about the pictures, what is happening in the picture? Dun so, sa usapan po ng mga estudyante. Ano ma'am? Ako po, Mr. Jeff po. Sige po, Sir Jeff. Um, based po dun sa picture, syempre, ano po natin yan? Ayun po yung real scenario ng public school. Oh, Di ba pagka, ano, pagka ba, medyo nakakaangat-angat ka, may mga magagandang gamit ka, marami kang friend, um, friends. Pero oh, pagka yung medyo untidy ka, left, ano ka, left alone ka. Di ba po? Oh, Which po. is, sa ngayon din, parang na-observe ko siya sa teacher. Nung nasa Pilipinas, may bias po. Po, po. Nung nasa Pilipinas ako, nung simula po nung nagturo ako na sa DepEd, doon ko na, napansin na may dalawang mukha pa lang school. Kasi nung nasa private school ako dati, parang lahat pantay-pantay sila. So nung nasa okay. depet ako, nagkaroon ng dalawang buka yung ano, na meron yung iba na kumakain ng lunchtime, ng lunch, yung iba wala. Yung iba, may dala silang, yung binalot po. Alam mo yung word na binalot? Pa, opo, opo, yung, yung sa dahon na, ng sa, no, ano, dahon na sa amin, iba, yung iba baunan opo, na plasticware. Opo, opo, yung iba piniritong karne, iba itlog, sardinas, yung parang, yun po, yung parang pinapakita po nitong ano, nung picture na yun na nagkakaroon po ng dalawang mukha po yung educational system po ng Pilipinas. Opo. Yes. Ilang po. Thank you po. Meron pa po ba mga insights? Uh, add po konti lang ma'am. Add ng konti. Sige po. Um, dito Sige, sa sir. picture parang pinapakita niya yung kasabihan na do not, do not judge the book by its cover. Kasi parang there was a time talaga na may ugali tayong Pilipino na parang kung ano yung nakikita nating panglabas masyado nating ginajudge yung isang tao but without thinking na may pinagdaanan pala behind of that kaya pala ganyan yung kasuotan niya ganyan yung kaya pala minsan hindi siya nakikita natin na hindi pupunta ng canteen or bumibili ng pagkain kasi pala there is a financial na problema sila so yun Opo. yun parang pinapakita pinap, oh, pinapakita dito yung ano yung minsan uh, yun nga minsan yung kakulangan natin ng magiging open-minded tayo bilang bilang isang tao na kagaya nila kasi hindi natin alam eh kung saan man sila galing ano yung background nila eh yun yun okay. so doon na doon po pasok yung realization natin sa yun sa sa environment natin ayun po yes. ma'am thank you po okay. thank you po ay nakita po yung paano po in treatment ng mga di pa po sa ito po sa comics nakikita yung treatment ng mga wealthy or yung mas nakakaangat kaysa po doon sa Ma- nasa laylayan lang or nasa mahirap na sitwasyon. Like for example, nung nasa picture nga pong batang lalaki, yung kanyang background sa family, hindi siya okay. Kaya po sobrang naapektuhan din yung kanyang performance, saka yung kanyang the way na panunuot niya, yung pananamit niya. Kaya mam, po. Kaya mam, mas maganda, I mean yung education po sa Makati ay mas maganda kumpara po dun sa iba. In terms po dun sa mga I mean needs ng estudyante. Kasi po, di ba, the give everything to the students po na pare-parehas. So, wala pong comparison. Opo. Sige po, next po tayo, next slide. Thank you, sir, ma'am. Papad ko lang po. Ah, sige po. Doon po sa slide kanina na ipinakita nyo, napansin ko po yung dalawang bata kasi naka-uniform. Tapos itong batang isa ay naka-freestyle. Yun. Opo. Yun pong suot nila ay nag i-indicate ng social class. Ngayon po kasi sa DepEd, sa amin, particular this school namin, hindi nire-require na magsuot ng uniform. uniform. Opo. Opo. Parang yun yung nakita ko na parang medyo hindi maganda kasi alam mo, pag kita mo agad dun sa bata kung mahirap siya or medyo nakakaangat siya sa buhay. Opo. Katulad po nito, kung pare-pareha silang naka-uniform, itong tatlong batang ito, hindi nila masyadong pansin o hindi nila masyadong halata na yung isa ay walang nabutas-butas yung damit, pumapasok Opo. ng ano. Ayun. Opo. Yun lang po siguro yung maganda dati na nawala ngayon na iba dati nung panahon po natin, required tayong naka-uniform. Kapag naka-uniform lahat, hindi mo alam kung sino yung mayaman, kung sino yung mahirap. Ngayon, Opo. kapag naka-freestyle, ramdam mo agad, kita mo agad sa bata bilang guro, kita mo agad sa bata yung mga bata na naghihikahong sa buhay at yung mga bata na medyo nakakaangat. 
Kasi po ma'am, di ba ngayon po nagkaroon na ng freedom of expression, parang hindi mo na pwedeng pigilan yung parang nagkakaroon na ng issue na pag, pag pinilit mo mag-uniform, ayaw nila kasi kailangan gusto, gusto ko ganito eh, ganito yung style ng pananamit ko, gusto ko na express yung sarili Opo. ko. Kaya po may ganun na rin, pinapayagan ng tanggalin yung uniform tsaka mag-freestyle na lang. Yun Yun lang thank you po. Sige po. Oh, po. Next slide po tayo, sir. Ayan po. Doon rin po sa how social class affects academic achievement. Yun din, hindi lang po sa socialization nagkakaroon ng influence or affect, effect yung yung social class po. Ganun din po sa academic achievement. Ayun po, mas makikita niyo po doon sa picture sa letter A po. Andun po yung, yung ladder niya is money. Tapos yung isa po ay hirap na hirap umakyat. So ayun po, iba pa rin po talaga yung well provided yung bata kaysa dun sa hirap na hirap yung family to provide the needs of the students. If well provided yung bata, madali lang siya makakapag-access ng mga gamit, maka, maka, makabili ng mga gamit na kailangan sa school, ma-provide yung mga project na hinihingi requirements. Unlike po sa mga hindi ganun kaayos yung buhay, hirap na hirap sila. Parang kahit elementary or even in high school, they are, they struggles, they have struggles in pagdating po sa mga financial, mga financial aspects, mga problems sa financial. Ganun din po sa letter, letter B, a picture, a picture in letter B, same class but different, uh, different gadgets na ginagamit. Yung isa po, ay uh, yung isa po ay materials na ginagamit. Yung isa po ay blackboard lang or a board. Yung isa naman po ay techno- technological gadget. Ayan po, naka-tablet siya. And then yung isa ay nakawa. Parang board lang. Sobra pong pinapakita dyan what is the difference of the... how the social class affects the academic achievement. Siyempre, the more na may access ka sa, sa technology, sa gadgets, na mar- marami kang... Uh, marami kang may financial assistance ganun, from your family, mas madali pong ma-access yung mga kailangan para matuto. And next po tayo. Next slide. How is stereoty- stereotyping affect socialization? So, paano nga ba nakaka-affect to yung socialization? Ay, yung stereotyping sa socialization. So when we say stereotyping, it is we are generalizing a certain trait or attitude or quality sa mga sa gender. For example, dito po mas makikita niyo po dito. Sabi dito, sa mga babae dito po sa side left side, girls are commonly weak, easily manipulated, artistic, beauty and beauty conscious and emotional. However, the boys are mind-working, technical, goal-oriented, risk-takers, and not showy. Pag kayo po ba, agree po ba kayo sa mga sinasabi niyang mga qualities? Mga sir, ma'am? No. Hindi po, ma'am. Hindi po. Hindi po. Hindi po. Bakit Hindi po? po? Sir, That... ano? Sir Aris, Sir Chris, ano? Kayo po muna. Um, sir Aris, ano? Let's go. <laughs> Alright. So, I think... Hmm, go, sir. Sige, sir. <laughs> Ayun Sige nga. Po, sir. Um, according to stereotyping, um, the society actually is putting, you know, genders, two genders in two boxes. Okay? So, yes. um, how funny it may seem na, na kung kailan ka linagay sa box, kung saan ka linagay sa particular place, doon ka naman hindi mapakali at hindi mapalagay. Di ba? Kung saan ka nakalagay. Actually, yung stereotyping na ito um, has been a problem uh, handed over to us uh, by older generations. So, ito yung minana natin from generations after generations. So, hindi ibig sabihin na kapag babae, hindi na pwedeng maging strong-willed or opinionated. That's why women are not allowed to vote before. That's why women are not, aren't uh, allowed to go to school. 
right? In 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 the history of our, our education. So it doesn't mean na kapag lalaki ka naman, eh, dapat hindi ka showy. Or kapag lalaki ka, hindi ka conscious sa iyong pangangatawan. Pag lalambot-lambot ka, does it mean babakla-bakla ka ba? So ito yung mga minana nating stereotype na I guess um, nakaka-hurt doon, nakaka-mas mas, uh, negative yung effect niya sa society natin uh, rather than doon sa mga good effects niya. I don't see any... Um, redeeming factor of stereotyping when it's when it comes to gender stereotyping. So yun po. Sir Aries, take it away. So yun nga, yun nga sinabi mo sir. Sinabi mo. <laughs> yun na. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry sir. Hi, <laughs> Anna. Okay, so meron po po ba tayo mga ibang uh, opinions? Like Ms. Shine, can you give us a piece of your mind? Pag, Hi, pag sa babae ba? Ano sir? Ano ba yung kanilang ano? Ayun. Sa babae po. Ayan, pag sinasabihan kami weak daw, ganun, kasi madaling umiyak. Eh, pa- paano po pag yung mga lalaki, di, pag iyakin, weak din, ganun. Um, ano? Ma'am, siguro ano? Since we are already in the 21st century, itong stereotyping na to napaka ano ni, eh, napaka kumbaga sa atin parang po obsolete na siya bakit? Kasi marami ng mga babae na mas stronger at pwedeng maging leader kagaya ng mga influential na babae na meron tayo ngayon. So at present, ganun din sa lalaki kasi hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na mas ma, mas magaling or mas ma, mas mas stronger ang mga lalaki pagdating sa ganito kaysa sa mga babae kasi ano nga eh base nga sa meron tayo ngayon na halos walang walang gender eh na, na binabasehan na ngayon eh mapapabae mapalalaki parehas pantay meron silang kapa- capacity na pwedeng gawin din ng babae na pwedeng gawin din ng baba ng lalaki so yun yes, po at, uh, katulad po dati yung mga nagda-drive lang po dati yung mga oh, palalaki yan ganun now marami mm. ng mga ano mga kahit nga mga batang babae 10 years oh. old or below yan kaya na po nilang mag-drive gawin yung mga ginagawa mechanic kong babae yan dati po sinasabi lang na para lang sa lalaki yun pero ngayon yun nga po kaya po hindi na siya ganun pero meron pa rin pong at some part po na mga at some part, nagkakaroon pa rin po ng stereotyping. For example, pag sa, yun po, next po natin, next slide, sir. Yan po, for example, next slide. Ayan po, dun po yun papasok doon sa sociocultural practices. Pag halimbawa po, ang babae ay umuwi ng, umuwi ng late bawat 12 midnight ganon 10 10 pm nagkakaroon na po sila agad ng negative na negative na sinasabi or negative impact na babaeng babaeng tao mo hindi ka ano gabing gabi ka na umuwi pero pag sa lalaki po ang gumawa nun, okay lang go okay lang kasi lalaki ka naman eh you can do whatever you want go wherever you want pero pag sa babae Nandun pa rin po yung ililimit mo sila na hanggang ganto ka lang bawal kang lumabas ng gantong oras or pag nag, nagpaabot ka ng midnight or gabi outside the house, ang tingin na sa'yo is yun, iba na yung tingin, negative na yung tingin sa'yo. So, ayun siguro po. ma'am, siguro ma'am kasi it is connected to culture po kasi kaya Opo. agad. Opo. Kaya yun nga po, social-cultural practices affect socialization. Katulad din po dito sa example sa example about circumcision for boys. So, after circumcision, boys are made to believe they have become adults capable of making their own decisions. Teaching done during the seclusion period instills a feeling of super- superiority they feel above the law. They acquire the DC or district commissioner mentality. They undermine women indiscriminately, including their female teachers. So, meron pong part ng mga mga part po ng mga lugar or country na may ganon parin pong tingin. 
na kapag ang lalaki, once they are circumcised, they are superior over women. But now sa Philippines, na medyo natatanggal na nga po yung ganun thinking. Pero meron pong sa mga part po sa ano, katulad po sa mga ibang bansa and also some region in the Philippines, may ganun pa rin po sila mga thinking. Kung baga, mga kulang pa po sa education about the gender equality. Kaya po nakaka-apekta rin siya sa socialization. Next slide po. How social ex exposure affects socialization? Eh, po, social exposure po, kasama po din yung social media and also the face-to-face -face interactions. The more na marami ka exposure with the people, with your friends, kasi po katulad ko, I am, ano po, mas kampante po ako or mas okay sa akin pag lagi lang sa bahay. I do not prefer going outside or party-party outside, ganun. Para, yun po, hindi po ako ganun ka-socialized na tao. But then yung nakikita ko po sa mga friends ko sa mga kapwa ko, yung mga kasing idaran ko po, iniisip nila, parang may ganun po kasing thinking na napaka-ano naman nito, ayaw makipag-socialize, laging sa bahay lang, sa bahay, ganun. So the more na-expose ka po sa pakikipag- Ayan po, interactions with your peer groups. Nakaka-apekto rin po siya sa socialization, kung paano, paano yung tingin mo sa sarili mo, yung confidence mo, together with the people, yung mga kasing edad mo. At madalas ka ma-OP, ganun, kasi hindi ka sanay eh. Lagi ka lang nandun sa, dun ka lang sa bahay, wala kang gaanong friends. So yung social exposure din po, nakaka-apekto siya. So hindi ko lang po sinasabi na, kailangan yung mga katulad ko, katulad ko, na katulad kong tao na prefer yung laging sa bahay lang is, sige, makipag-socialize kayo, magbaguhin nyo kung ano, ta, ano ka. Pero, at some point po, nakaka-apekto rin yung social exposure. Tsaka po sa mga curricular activities, nas nabubus po yung confidence natin or yung paglagi po tayong sumasalit sa mga competition. We participate in uh, school activities that requires camaraderie. Ganun po yung mga makikipag-interact ka talaga sa mga kapwa mo, estudyante. Ayun po. Ayun po. Okay na po. May, may tanong po ba sa ating topic 1? Kung wala na po, let's proceed to topic 2. It is about the pedagogical pedagogical methods of teaching used in a classroom. Ayan. So before we proceed to the pedag pedagogical methods, let us first discuss about the different generations. So, siyempre, bago po tayo magturo or bago po tayo gumamit ng mga materials or instructions to our teaching, let us consider what generation we are teaching or what kind of students are we having right now. Yan. There are six generations po. We have six generations. These are greatest generation, silent generation, baby boomers, generation X, millennials, or gen Y, and then generation Z. Next slide po. Who are the silent generations? And what are their characteristics? Silent generation, also referred as matures or traditionalists, So, kung mapapasin nyo po, hindi na po na discuss natin yung mga great generation kasi super tagal na po nila. Tapos karamihan po siguro mga, karamihan po ay namayapa na ano po. Kaya po dito tayo sa silent generation. Matures or traditionalists in some literature are those born prior to 1946 or the end of World War II. They were children of the Great Depression whose parents faced great economic hardship and struggled to provide for their families. Many lost their fathers or older siblings who were killed in the war. So, ayan po, the characteristics of the silent generation workers are loyal, highly dedicated, strong commitment to teamwork and collaboration, high regard for developing interpersonal communication skills. So, during this time po, it is, ano, panahon po ng World War II hanggang dun sa katapusan ng World War II. This generation are, nakafocus po sila sa Build, build, build. Kasi po, 
mga Panay, nag- nasira lahat. Wash out lahat, maraming mga namatay, maraming nasirang mga establishment. Kumbaga parang back to zero. So they are, napipressure sila to work hard and to be dedicated to their jobs. Okay, katulad niyo po, strong commitment to teamwork and collaboration and developing interpersonal communication skills. So dahil marami sa kanila ang nawalan ng mahal sa buhay, mas naging focus po nila yung pag-develop ng interpersonal communication skills kasi sobrang nabawasan po yung mga population. Marami doon na mga friends, kaibigan, kapamilya. So kaya po nagkaroon sila ng developing interpersonal communication skills. Next slide po tayo. So ba, ba, may nakaabot pa ba dyan ng ano, silent generation? World War II. Mga lola at lolo po natin siguro. Ano po? Ako to, baby boomer. Baby boomer. <laughs> Ayan po, baby boomer naman tayo. Sino ba itong mga baby boomers na to? Baby boomers are those born between 1946 and 1960 as children of post-war survivors. The first to generation to actively declare a higher priority to work over personal life. Ayan po, ito naman po yung ganun din po. Work, work din sila. Work, work, work. Ang focus nila. Work, 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 work. Ayan po yung focus nila kasi maraming nasira. Yung mga nakaranas nila, yung mga magulang nila is sobrang hirap na mag-provide sa kanila ng mga needs nila. That's why nandun yung pressure na, ay, kailangan ko maghanap buhay. I need, I need to make a living to provide for my family. Ganun. But they are also responsible for the new generation with its pursuit to personal gratification. Kasi po, yan pong mga baby boomers, ang tawag po sa anak nila is me generation. Then yung anak po ng me, gen- me generation, ang tawag me, me generation. And then yung anak po ng me, me generation, me, me, me generation. Bakit po? Kasi lag, habang tumatagal yung generation, evolution of generation, nakafocus na tayo sa pansarili. Parang, paano ako? Paano ganyan? Paano naman ako yung, yung ano ko, yung karapatan ko? Mas nagiging ano na tayo? Nagiging, nagiging sensitive na tayo to sa personal feelings, personal rights. Iniisip natin lagi yung mga tapakanan natin. Ito. Next tayo, Generation Xers or Generation X. Generation X are those born between 1960 and 1980. Born in a time declining population growth. Naturally questioned authority figures are responsible for creating the work and life balance concept. So diyan po pasok yung mga katulad po namin mga yung magulang ko po nasa na, generation X po sila. Napapansin ko po sa mga kabatch ng Sa so, nakapag napapansin ko po sa mga kabatch ko ng magulang ko ng nanay at tatay. Ko. Ano po parang yung mga naranasan nila noon ayaw man nilang iparanas sa mga anak nila na oh ganitong hirap ganito kami pag pag ano yun ang palay noon, ganito kami habang nag-aaral, habang nagpapahinga, nag, nagbabayo ng palay, pahinga ba yun? Ganun, nag-aaral ka, lalakarin mo, nag-aaral ka, kailangan mo, pag hindi ka mag-aaral, magtatrabaho ka sa bukid. So, ganun po yung ano, parang ang thinking po nila is, wag, na, wag ma- maramdaman ng anak namin yung naranasan namin noon. Ayan po. Tapos, they decline also the population growth. Doon po siguro pumasok yung yung ano nga ito, yung pag-control po, birth control, mga ganun po. Doon na po nauso na kailangan hindi natin damihan yung anak kasi iniisip natin yung future nila. Ganun, ganun po, doon po muwasa ko yung sa mga generation Xers. Parang Next po ako tayo. yun, ma'am, ma. generation <laughs> Xers. Ako din, ma'am. Pasok ba ma'am? Pasok? Yes, pasok, pasok sa generation. Pasok, pasok, pasok na, mo. pasok ma'am sa generation X. Opo. Oh, Di ba ma'am? Yeah. Sino po yung isang? 1970s po. Mamay ma'am. 1970, yeah. 1960. Yes po, 1970s po. Yes ma'am. Oh, Napapagala tayong edad natin. <laughs> ah, 1980s pala ako ma'am, sorry. 1980s po ako. <laughs> no, ako pa pala yung generation 1970s. X. <laughs> pasok pa rin po generation X. Ayan po. Next po tayo sa si Generation Wise or the Millennials. So ayun po, akala ko po dati ako'y kasama rin sa Millennials, hindi pala. Generation Z na pala ako. Kasi po 1998. Ayun, Millennials or Generation Wise are born between 1980s and 1995. They are the first global-centric generation. 
having come of age during the rapid growth of the internet and global terrorism. Ngayon po, nag-start na po yung internet, pagamit ng internet, gadgets. The most resilient in navigating change while deepening their appreciation for diversity and inclusion. Ito pong mga millennials or generation Y, sila po yung kind of person or people that can easily adapt to changes. For example, katulad ngayon, ang dami ng mga gadgets na naglalabas ang mga kailangan ng sa pagtuturo, kailangan marunong ka sa technology. They can easily adapt. They can, see, they can easily adapt and can work well with the use of technology. Hindi po sila parang tinatanggap nila yung mga pagbabago na gagawin ng event agad. Hindi po katulad ng mga naunang generation na sobrang hirap. Katulad po nung sa lola ko po, hirap na po siyang maunawaan. Ganito na po, na yung, ganito na po yung mga kabataan na yung we cannot compare them to your times saka po yung modern times. Hindi po natin pwede compare kasi sobrang haba na ng panahon na nakalipas. Marami nung mga ba. Ayun naman po. So, Generation Z naman tayo. Generation Z who are said to be born after 1995. So, ayan po. Born after 1995 up to present. They are, they are financially focused, entrepreneurial mindset, technologically inclined, enjoys other people, competitive and welcome changes, prefers independence, wants to be heard, and can be a lot like their parents. Yan. Sa tingin ko po, opo, medyo ganun po, pero sa mga kapatid, sa mga kapatid ko po sa medyo nakikita ko yung ganun na financially focused talagang ang mindset is nakapag-business, small business halimbawa nag-aaral, may business na maliit ganun, parang gusto po nilang may maiipon agad sila na magagamit nila for the future tsaka po sa mga kapatid ko rin ngayon pag katulad po namin, halimbawa po pagka-graduate the more years na tambay kami, mas lalo kami napipressure, mas lalo kami stress the more na nagtatagal kami hindi pa rin naiin sa pagtuturo lagi las mas lalo kaming na-pressure na bakit ang tagal ano bang ba, ano ba dapat ano ba nangyayari tsaka po pag hindi po nat- nat- nasunod yung timeline namin iniisip namin para katapusan na ba to gano'n hanggang dito na lang ba ako entrepreneurial mindset and technological technologically inclined enjoys other people ayun po enjoys other people kasi paramihan nga po ngayon sa mga kabataan Yan, maraming mga friendly, socially inclined, ganun. Maraming po sila mga circle of friends. Hindi sila nag-stick lang sa isa-isa, dala, dalawa. Maraming, maraming friends. Kaya nilang makisabay kahit kanino. Competitive and welcome changes. Sorry po, malakas ang ulan dito. Narinig po ba dyan? Ayan po. According, according, Next generation, ay next, ano na po tayo, next slide. According to Nang and Parry, EMA 2016, Gen Z is seen as the first truly digital and global generation. A global and diverse generation who grew up in a wider mix of backgrounds than other generations. So if this, this generation po yung Gen Z, they never known a world without computers and cell phones. Sila po yung mga, kami po yung mga generation na pagkagising pa lang, kapakapan agad sa gilid ng kama. Sabay cellphone ko, sino nyo pa nag-chat sa akin. Pag, pag nalobat na po yung cellphone, parang, ah, manalobat na pala, kailangan ko na-charge agad. Yun. Parang hindi, yun nga, it is almost like the air that they breathe, permitting almost all areas of their lifestyle and relationships. We are very dependent to technology and gadgets. Parang without technology, without computers and cell phones, we can never imagine life. Parang ganun po. Parang mamatay lang yung phone mo ng ilang oras, kating-kating ka na na gusto mo nang buksan ulit. Hindi pa nga full charge gusto nang buksan ulit. Ganun po yung mga generation na yun. And po, this, is all, this is only a summary of all the generation, the timeline. Next po natin. Slide. These are the summaries of the generation timeline. Next po, next sir. So let's proceed to pedagogy. Pedagogy refers to the interactions between teachers, 
students and the learning environment and the learning task. This road turn includes how teachers and students relate together as well as the instructional approaches implemented in the classroom, according to UNESCO 2021. So, in pedagogy, pala, it, it includes the interactions, the instructional materials, the objectives, and how are you going to manage the classroom or your the class as a whole. Kasama po pala siya sa pedagogy. Yung mga theory and practice na ginagamit natin, yung instructive content. Tsaka po yung way ng pagpapresent natin at pag-deliver sa learner. Di ba po sa mga sa lesson class, yung buong lesson class, na, sa lesson plan po natin, lahat po na nakalagay doon is part of the pedagogy as well as how are you going to execute your lesson? How are you going to assess your students? It is all part of the pedagogy. Next slide po. Yeah, educational basis of teaching ped pedagogy. According to Republic, it is inclined with the Republic Act 10533, also known as also known as Enhanced Basic Education of 2003. Next slide, sir. Curriculum development. So the deaf, the deaf edge shall work. The the section five states that the deaf edge shall work with the the CHED and the technical or the TESDA technical education and skills development authority to adhere following standards and principles in developing the enhanced basic education curriculum. Next book. Ayan. So, may kita po natin dun sa mga following standards po. Kasama po dito yung i-highlight na po natin yung letter E. Sabi po roon, the, curri the curriculum shall use pedagogical approaches that are constructivist, inquiry-based, reflective, collaborative, and integrative. So, ayun po. These are the five the five pedagogical approaches that we can use in teaching. Next slide po. And first, we have the constructivist. Simple lang po yun. Constructivist, ano po mga ma'am and sir? It is about uh, relating the past knowledge the plus the, the past knowledge to construct a new knowledge and for brings past experiences and cultural factors to construct a new knowledge yung po mga past experiences ng mga bata natin yung estudyante natin nagagamit po nila dun sa bagong learnings or sa bagong lessons na tinatackle sa classroom yun po yung constructivist next sir next Since the construction is the process of learning, teachers have a big role. A. A big role. Letter A to influence or create motivating conditions for students. Letter B take responsibility for creating problem solutions. And then followed by foster, foster acquisition and retrieval of prior knowledge. Letter D, create the process of learning, not the product of learning. So in this approach, constructivist approach, the students are responsible for the process of learning. Mas focus tayo dun sa process ng learning, not the product of learning. So sila po yung magko-construct ng new knowledge using their past experiences. Na pwede nilang i-relate, ano, na-experience po to, ganito, ganyan. Tapos i -re relate po nila dun sa mga lessons nyo. Yeah, next po tayo. Some constructivist theories include includes social learning theory by Albert Bandura and experiential learning by David Cobb. So ayun po, sinas, according to Albert Bando, Bandura, 
Students learn by observing, modeling, and imitating the behaviors attitudes and emotional reactions of others. So, sikat na sikat po diyan yung Bobodal experiment po ni Albert Bandura wherein the students observe and imitate what does the adult do dun sa Bobodal po na sinusuntok-suntok, sinasaktan-saktan and then gagaya, ang nangyari po, ginaya po nung estudyante yung ginawa po nung adult nung may edad na dun sa ginawa niya sa Bobodal, sinaktan-saktan niya ginaya nung bata Pero doon sa sumunod na scene, hindi na sinaktan ng adult yung... Ah, parang ang pinakita po doon is napalo po yung batang nananakit doon po sa Bobodal. And then, ang ginawa po ng third na bata, ng pangatlong bata, hindi na po niya sinaktan yung Bobodal kasi po napalo na yung isa. Kumbaga po, we learn by what we observe Ayo po. We learn but what by what we observe and what we see in others. And also experiential learning it is about learning by doing. Mas maintindihan po ng mga bata yung lessons or yung topic if they experience doing it or kung merong on hand na activity na mas maintindihan maintindihan nila at may apply nila sa may apply nila sa real life. Next po. And then the collaborative approach. Hali 2018 cited that collaborative learning can be defined as a set of teaching and learning strategies promoting student collaboration to small groups. So, madali lang po yan from the word collaborative. May collaboration po or magkakolab po, magkakaroon ng more on group works, more more on group activity, wherein we can strengthen the band of the children or the students. Mas madali, mas madali po sila makakapag-create ng product through group groupings and group activities. And collaboration. Some suggested activities are online collaborative learning, Next slide po, apo. Two jigsaw, jigsaw method and three think, pair, share, four integrated process approach and fear of peer teaching. So, ayun po, peer teaching, this refers to the activity where a student can teach or help her or his co-students or co-learners to, in, to understand the certain topic. Next po. Yan. Inquiry base. First, we have the collaboratives. I first, we have the collaborative, tsaka po yung collaborative, inquiry base, a constructivist, collaborative, and then the third is inquiry base. Inquiry based learning is an approach to learning that emphasizes the student's role in the learning process rather than the, t- the teacher telling students what they need to know. Students are encouraged to explore the material, ask questions, and share ideas. Instead of memorizing facts and materials, students learn by doing. This allows them to build knowledge through exploration, experience, and discussion. And po, more on expo- exploration naman po inquiry base. Hindi, uh, ang students po yung mag-explore ng material. This is ano common po sa mga research, ayun po mga project work, mga more on research po kasi ikaw yung maghahanap ng data, collect the data and then interpret and then you make a conclusion. Yun po yung sa mga research, di ba? Sa mga kada subject po halos nagpapagawa na ng research na yun. Next po. Some suggested activity is simulation, demonstration, experiment, field study, and project work. Ayun po. Kung gusto niyo pa ng inquiry-based yung approach niyo, you can uh, adopt these following strategies. Then, integrative approach. Reflect- reflective approach po tayo. 
Reflective teaching learning approach means looking at what the teacher and learners do in classroom, thinking about why they do it, and analyzing about it if it works. This is a process of self-evaluation or self-observation. So, yung kasama po din sa mga pwede nating activity or strategies is or assessment is diary presentation, paper writings, or journals. In this approach po, students are given chance to reflect on their own understanding what what have I learned or how these lessons help me as a student and how these lessons can help me in real life. Ayun po, more on reflection. I-evaluate natin kung ano bang natutunan natin for this day, for this week. Kaya po, usad ninyo Puso doon yung mga diary, dear diary, ganyan. paper writings or journals. Dati po nung during my during grade school po, mga grade 5 and grade 6 ako, tanda ko may, may sulating pang wakas pa, tsaka ano, formal team sa English. Sobrang nakatulong po sa akin kasi, ayun po, na na-check yung grammar, na-check yung spelling, the way na magsusulat ng sentence yung bata. Tapos ngayon po parang inalis na po siya, hindi po ba, mga mom and sir? Meron pa po bang mga ano ngayon? Formal team and asulating pang wakas? Wala na po. Wala na po. Yun po yung... Ano mo ang term paper na ngayon? Case study, ganyan. Opo, term paper. Kasi po yung... Yung pong sulating pangwakas sa formal team, medyo ano po siya eh, parang personal, ganun, magkakwento ka about uh, personal. Modern style of writing. Opo. Yung ngayon po kasi more on technical writing na yung kailangan malalalim na English na yung, eh pag dun pa nga lang po sa basic, basic na yung estudyante, what more pa dun sa mga research based ng mga sentence na gagawin. So parang... Yun nga po, iniisip ko pag pwede pa rin po bang gamitin yung mga ganyan, formal team, sulating pang wakas nowadays. Para po, yung basics, kasi bago tayo magpunta sa complex or the most complicated, dapat magsimula po muna tayo sa basics. Kaya po, napapansin ko rin po dun sa mga, yun po sa mga teachers ngayon, yung mga estudyante ngayon, mas, mas magagaling po sila sa grammar or Ayun po sa English sa language, kumpara po sa mga, yun po sa mga naging nakilala ko rin pong mga sumunod na batch. Kasi sabi nga po nung isa namin, din namin sa college, sabi, bakit ganun? K-12 nga. K-12 nga. Pero dapat, yun daw pong mga first year ngayon, supposedly they are th third year college pag sa basic education. Pero bakit daw po ganun mag-construct ng, ng, ano, ng sentences, paragraph, bakit parang hindi pa rin daw okay for the level of third, third year college. So, yun po yung parang problema din sa mga language teacher. Kasi yung basic, nakakalimutan. Okay, guys. Uh, <laughs> okay, kasi nga, ma'am. Uh, an uh, updated uh, 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 paper writing, like you've mentioned, na before meron pang mga sulating uh, uh, Sulatim pangwakas, like that. And today, we have already the uh, so-called research. No? On the research, meron pa siyang pinaiksi. No? Ito yung latest na uh, uh, output na dapat gawin ng mga estudyante in all subjects on the later part at least five to six years from now. Uh, the so-called IMRAD. IMRAD, uh, is uh, a research, a shortened research, a brief and concise research presented uh, into at least uh, three to five pages. Uh, IMRAD, I stands for introduction, M stands for methodology, R stands for results, a and uh, D stands for discussion. So that's all for a uh, shortened part of the research. So hindi na tulad ng uh, chapter 1, uh, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, and chapter 5. So 
ang dami-daming dadaanan pero uh, there are repetitions in na uh, uh, statement but when you use the imrad you can uh, uh, write it in a short and concise um, uh, preparation and that can also be used for publication yun ang mangyayari in the part so nagbabago there are some changes in education at yan ay can be used local and international okay mm-hmm. so kanina uh, as i heard from the professor uh, you you, uh, you tackled about the social socialization am i right yes po socialization <clears throat> uh, in teaching you see I, i made up my example in my mind you see teachers in the philippines and teachers from other countries are coming from the philippines no lahat sila mga filipino but only then nagkataon na <clears throat> luckily pasa sila sa interview and they work abroad uh, isa lang ang masasabi ko no uh, yung kultura ng pilipino ay hindi dapat makalimutan yung basic basic culture ng Pilipino. Kahit nasaan ka man parte ng mundo, mayaman ka man, umasenso ka sa education. Kasi sabi nga niyan, uh, kung gusto mong umasenso, sa negosyo ka, huwag ka sa, sa academe, sa education. Pero may mga paraan naman para umasenso tayo even if we are uh, uneducators. So like ganyan, you work abroad, you earn dollar, etc. And of course, we save money. Again and again, don't forget the traditional culture of Philippines. Kung nasaan ka mga lugar, ano man ang ginagawa mo, maayos man ang pamamaraan mo ng pagtuturo, and your communication skills uh, uh, medyo nag, uh, nagbago at tumaling ka, eh, good for you. Kaya lang, kapag nandito ko sa Pilipinas, as I observe from my students, parang, parang nahihiya sila si compare some other uh, other uh, uh, teachers in the same institution. Parang nagkakaroon sila na, ay, magaling si ganito kasi they have worked abroad. Ah, sabi dito ay nagtuturo lang ako sa isang maliit na public school. Okay, so nandoon yung nahihiya sila. Ito naman yung mga international students natin ay medyo malakas ang loob kasi they are exposed in um, in uh, some other uh, uh, culture, in other cultures. But then, ang sinasabi ko, I am pointing out na kahit na saan siya man, huwag mong kakalimutan yung basic culture ng Pilipinas. Ano yun? Irespeto mo yung kapwa. No? Yung magbigay ka ng, let's say, if you want to do something na akala mo makakapag, makakatulong ka sa yung uh, kapwa, kapwa estudyante dito sa Pilipinas, you have to ask permission first. Diba? Uh, mag, uh, magpaalam mo na, is it okay if I uh, gave an instruction to uh, my co- classmates regarding this one. Oh yeah, ano. You know. Bawa, pwede ka magpaalam doon sa group leader. Like what we are doing, yung pina-practice natin, nakikita ko maganda yung rapport ng estudyante ko ngayon. So the uh, uh, teachers in the Philippines and teachers in, Tha- in Thailand, maganda yung rapport. Sana maging uh, hindi pa man nangyayari sa inyo, maging lesson na natin ito, no? na irespeto ang bawat isa. Hindi dahilan na maayos na ang buhay mo, magaling ka na, nasa ibang bansa ka na nagtuturo, at the end of the day, babalik ka sa Pilipinas. No? Pagbalik mo, maka- ma- nakataas ang noo mo, kasi nakataas ang, nakachin up ka, kasi maayos yung ginawa mo. Okay? 
So, doon lamang po. Again, going back, uh, hindi na lang research, hindi na lang action plan. Meron na tayong binagawa ngayong IMRAD. Production, methodology, uh, ano ba yun? R. Uh, results and discussion. Uh, pasok yan sa 3 to 5 pages. Unlike the research, research uh, mahaba. No? There are 5 chapters. There are repetition in the statement. Okay? So, wala na mga sulating panditunan, mga essay, an- anong mga tawag ng panahon. So, okay. there are changes in education. Okay? That's all, guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Oh. sir. Thank you, Doc. Thank you po, sir. Okay na po. Next slide, sir. Next na po. Okay na po yun. And references po. Ayan po yung mga references. And thank you po. Thank you, everyone's participation po. Thank you so much, thank you, ma'am. Thank you po. Thank you so much, ma'am. May tanong, may tanong po ba? Sis... Si Sir Chris na po ang nag-report. Okay po. So, thank you so much again, Ma'am Hana Arguelles. And now, for the last presentation, let's have Sir Christopher Perepinian for the Single Sex versus Co-Ed Schooling or Classroom. Sir Chris. Sir, thank you po. Maraming salamat. Hi, classmates. Before we start, I'd like, you to, I'd like to share you this video as my introduction. Please watch. Hello everyone, my name is Teacher Christopher John Parafina and I'm your reporter for today. I'm going to talk about single sex education versus co-ed education. How are they different? Do they have some similarities? Which one is better? Today, let's try to find out. In the past, education was only available to boys. When girls began to be educated, they had to attend all-girls schools. Eventually, schools became co-educational, and this style is the most popular type of schooling today. Recently, though, single-sex schools have made a comeback, and this has raised the question of whether they are actually better than co-ed schools. When boys and girls are in the same class, all is well until they start to experience a range of emotions because of the opposite sex. When this happens, they can lose focus on their goals and as a result, their studies naturally fail. Life already has too much distraction as it is. So shouldn't we minimize one of them for the sake of education? Wait a minute. Emotions such as love don't have to be destructions. For many young people, wanting to impress others can actually motivate them to work harder than usual. Their grades improve and they might even grab the attention of that special someone. Okay, okay, fine. Emotions perhaps could motivate some teens, but remember, all teens have to go through puberty. Their bodies and voice change and their emotional ups and downs become extreme. Many feel shy or even ashamed during this time and they can understand why. A single sex environment would minimize their discomfort because they wouldn't have to deal with the opposite sex during this challenging time. True, but remember that after student graduate and enter the real world, everything is, well, co-ed. People aren't separated by gender. Single sex education doesn't prepare students for this, but in a co-ed setting, teens learn how to socialize and interact with one another under adult supervision. School isn't just about learning academic knowledge. It should help them prepare for society as well. For a brighter future, co-education lights the way. Hmm, I really don't think so. Why don't we ask some teachers here? What type of school should our students attend? Alright guys, based on the video, what type of school should students attend? So I'll accept like two um, volunteers from the class. So what do you think guys? 
maybe I'll call on uh, Miss Annalyn. Miss Annalyn? Yes, sir, Chris. Anong, ano, ano daw po? <laughs> <laughs> ano po kaya yung, based on the video po, ano po kaya yung, ano, yung tawag dito? Uh, what do you think is the best school or type of school should our students attend? Based doon po sa setup po natin sa Philippines that we have right now. Like? Like single sex po or yung exclusive schools or yung co-ed where they um, mix boys and girls in one classroom. Ako sir, kasi naranasan ko yung ano eh, same, ano, nung high school kasi ako puro kami baba. <laughs> Wala. Uh, we started nung first year na co-ed, so boys and girls. And then pagdating ng second year ko, up to fourth year, puro babae na kami, hiwala yung lalaki. So, yes. Para kasing mas, mas okay sa akin na, sa Apa. ano, kasi mas maganda yung ano, co-ed. Kasi kami nun parang puro lang kami babae. Yes. So, parang iba, oo. Kaya kami noon, ako, pag may acquaintance, excited na kami kasi makakakita kami ng mga klaseng lalaki. <laughs> kasi iba yung, yes, iba yung building nila sa building namin. So, kami, puro babae lang kami. Uh, during times na sa perpetual, sabi niyan. So, yun, pinaghiwalay nila yung babae. Pinaghiwalay nila yung lalaki. So, based on my own experience, mas maganda siguro, mas maganda, sir, yung uh, co-ed. Ano? Kasi minsan may makukuha rin tayo ano pag uh, may may kahalubi may sort may kahalubi to tayo yung lalaki. Ano yep. based on my own experience sir. So mas maganda po yung poet. Hindi kasi parang ang tingin ko noon napakadal ng aming klase kasi puro kami babae, girl talk, girl talk, girl talk wala <laughs> baga. Kaya gito ay. Wala lang sir. Parang ganun lang. Parang mono lang. Parang puro babae lang talaga. 'Yon. Oh, I agree. Alright, maraming salamat po, Ms. Annaline. Ang Thank dami you, po sir, Chris. Uh, galing po sa inyo. Alright, I'll accept one more. Uh, can we have some volunteer? What type of school should our students attend based on the setup that we have right now in the Philippines? Can I hear from Ms. Shine? Or from Sir Roy? Okay po, sir. Yes po, Sir Roy. Please okay, leave uh, by the way, maganda pala yung introduction mo, ah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, para sa akin po, uh, in my personal experience po, um, siguro, ano, there is a positive advantage ng uh, single lang, yung uh, same gender lang sa isang school. Kagaya nung skwelahan ko po ngayon, it's exclusive girls po siya. And then, there is also a positive side din po ng mix po. Kasi doon po sa positive note ng single sex lang, kagaya ng girls school na meron kami ngayon, ang mga bata, ano, um, so hindi, uh, mas focus sila. Nakikita ko mas focus sila kasi walang masyadong interaction with boys. And then at the same time, doon naman po sa, ano, doon naman po sa mix, parang ang mismong sudyante natin, nabibuild nila yung trust nila sa, same, uh, sa opposite sex. Kasi nga, um, hindi, uh, doon nila nabibuild yung uh, other skills din nila and then yung pangunawa nila sa society din. Y- yun yung parang nakikita ko na positive side siya. Yan. Parehas mm-hmm. sa akin, depende sa, sa, di, siguro depende sa parent kung anong preferred ng parent at saka anong preferred ng estudyante mismo. Kasi I do believe po na whatever school setting na ang isang estudyante, kung saan man siya pumunta as long as nandoon yung eagerness niya to learn and to achieve her goal, makukuha at makukuha niya yun. Yun, yun yun. Maraming maraming salamat po, Sir Roy. Okay, no, thank po. you. Um, ka bong uh, sagutan ka agad ang ating na uh, tungayan. And well, uh, point, well, points well taken, guys. Um, from Ma'am Annalyn and from Sir Roy. Um, during my presentation, we're going to, to explore more kung ano ba yung uh, best type or ano ba yung pinagkaiba or ano ba yung mas uh, advantageous para sa setup ng Philippines. Kasi hindi naman lahat ay, you know, practical, especially ngayon sa kalagayan natin. So let's move on, guys. Alright. Okay. Excuse me, guys. Yes, sir. Uh, once you need a participation, you can call group numbers 1 to 17. No, I want 1 to 7. 
So you have seven uh, uh, responses when you ask questions. Okay. Kasi as I heard, uh, laging sila, sila na lang, silang apat, no? Actually, lagi ko naririnig, no? So, let us give a chance to others to uh, share their uh, ano, ideas and thoughts. So, you yes. can just call the group number. Let's say, uh, is there anybody from the group one? Oh, pag walang sumagot sa group one, alam ko na yun. So, you can... <laughs> Proceed to group 2, then group 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You see, uh, I am just uh, taking notes on the students who are participating on the uh, discussion. You see, napakasaya, napakasarap pakinggan, nag-share sila ng kanilang mga thoughts. Kanina pa, marami ako naririnig ng kanilang mga... Uh, uh, experiences like uh, uh, if I may recall one student uh, share her uh, uh, rules sa bahay na 6 o'clock kailangan umuwi yung yes, mga so. anak so, napakaganda nun diba? so na-share niya yung kanyang idea at least uh, yung mga parents dyan at may mga bagong uh, bagong pamilya o magpapamilya pa lamang you can create your own rule, no house rule, na mapapakinabangan habang buhay. Although traditional way, pero uh, it works. No? Yeah. So, ganun, going back to uh, uh, calling for participation, you may call the group numbers. Of course, meron yung leader, meron yung uh, members. Okay? So, thank, thank you. you. All right. All right, guys, so we have heard from group one, two, and three, and four. So right now, let's go back to what type of sh uh, school should our students attend. So can we hear from group number five, six, and seven? Any volunteers, guys? Come on, maganda ganda to. Maganda to. <laughs> Come on, guys. Please. Yes, Miss Morales. Ayan, group from what Ayan. group? Yeah, that's a share po ng high school. Kasi alam naman natin na yung hormones nila ay ganun kataas. Kapag nasa high school tayo. Dumadating po kami sa time na nung face-to-face -face pa, nakikita namin yung mga estudyante namin na mag-boyfriend-girlfriend na hmm. andun sa CR, nagbe-make out. <laughs> <laughs> ano po, imagine na yung aming lugar ay medyo far up lang, hindi nang na okay. nag-expect ako dati na pag nasa linang, mga prim and proper, yung mga estudyante. Yes. yes. Nagulat ako pag punta ko sa CR, may nag-make out na estudyante. Yun. <laughs> Feeling ko kapag ganun na high school, parang mas okay yung single sex. Kasi tayong mga teachers, hindi naman, hindi naman natin 24-7 or 8 hours nang babantayan yung estudyante natin kung ano ba yung ginagawa nila, kung... Kasi minsan po, naggagawa na nga sila ng milagro. Kasi yes. alam na pagsalinang. Kasi yung likod lang ng school namin, parang may mga sagingan. Kaya nga, lagi naglolokhan yung mga estudante ko na, ay ma'am, ando na naman po sila, ando na naman sila sa sagingan. Akala ko nung una, sir, yun ay biro-biro lang. Pero nung, ano, later on, nung nagtagal ako sa school, Opo. Tunay pala, ganun pala talaga yung nangyayari, ganun pala talaga yung senaryo. Yun, medyo nakakabahala lang na, oo, oh, masaya, masaya talaga na magkasama yung babae at lalaki kasi kapag babae lang, parang competition, competition, pagalingan, yung lalaki, pambasag kasi may joker, pero yung, yung ano po, yung situation na ganun, na alam naman natin na mataas yung hormones nila, yun yung medyo nakakabahala. Kaya para sa akin po, kapag high school, parang mas maganda yung single sex kesa dun po sa co-ed. Ayan, thank you. Maraming maraming salamat po, Miss Angelica Morales. Ayan, ma'am, from what group po tayo? Ayan, yan sa group itatang... 7 po. Group 7. Yes, sir. Oh. Sir, ako po, group 7 din. 
Group 7 from Sir Christian Davides. Ayan. So currently po, meron po tayong two votes for mix and one for single. Sir, para po naman sa elementary, since nasa elementary level po ako, ano? Siguro mas, uh, ang type po siguro ng school para sa mga bata during elementary days ay uh, co-ed. Kasi po nasa stage pa po sila ng self-discovery. And I firmly believe that uh, uh, girls can learn from boys. And like question, the other cap, kakabalitara naman po, boys can learn from girls. So yun po sir, thank you po. Maraming maraming salamat po sir Christian. So we have three mix and one single um, education. Now, let's go to, I think I'd like to hear from group number five and six. Do we have some representative po? Hello sir, group five po. Hi, Miss Elaine? Yes po sir. Hi, Miss Elaine. Nice to see you again. <laughs> Hi sir. Sa akin po, uh, ano din po, mix din po, kapulad po nung sagot ng iba. Kasi po, based on my experience, I teach ano po kasi grade 2. So, pag po kasi mga bata, parang mas nagiging, mas maganda yung ano, yung, yung uh, mix sila. Kasi ano, nakaka, nagkakaroon sila ng interaction sa ibang mga classmates nila na ano, mas ano ba, mas, mas nakikita yung ano nila. Mas maaan yung, ano ba to, yung parang, yung, yung kanilang, ano, yung kanilang interest, yes. yung mga gusto nilang gawin, parang, kumbaga, mas, ano, mas, mas magkakaroon sila ng idea kung sino ba talaga ako, ano ba talaga yung dapat na ginagawa ko, ano ba yung ginagawa ng babae, ano ba yung ginagawa ng lalaki, or ano ba yung, ano ba yung attitude ng babae, at ano ba yung attitude ng lalaki. So, magkakaroon ba, Ba, para po bang magkakaroon sila ng idea kung ano yung mga mga bagay na yun kapag mix po sila. So, yun lang po sa akin. Maraming salamat po, Miss Elaine. Thank you po for dropping by. And also, from group number five, can we hear uh, some insights from you guys? Hello, leader. Group number five and six. Come on. Five ako, sir. A uh, five, six. Sorry, Five sorry, mga ako, yeah. Group number six. Yeah, I, I saw Miss Elaine raising her hand. Come on, Miss Elaine. Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, tapos na ako. Nag-ano na ako. Uh, sino yung nag-raise ng hand kanina? I'm so sorry. Group number six. No more? Uh, Miss Regalo, Elisa. Sir, excuse po. Kami po ang group six. Sa Ma'am Emma. Ay, sorry. Oh, okay, okay. Sige group po. 5 po ako, sir. Sorry po. <laughs> <laughs> Alright po. Would you like to uh, take part of our discussion po, ma'am? Uh, para po sa akin, sir, ano, yung co-ed po. Kasi, co-ed. di ba po, although ako po kasi wala pa rin akong uh, experience po sa pagtuturo. Pero para po sa akin, uh, the more po kasi na uh, diverse po yung environment or yung setup, yes, mas po. marami po tayong uh, natututunan dun sa differences natin. Ayan, Totoo. yun lang po. Maraming maraming salamat po. Maraming maraming salamat classmates. So, for five, uh, for six groups na nag-share um, five prefer mixed or the co-ed and only one group prefer uh, single. I mean, not not necessarily group but one uh, teacher shared that she prefer um, single uh, education. Alright, so let's find out more about uh, these types of education. So let's move on. Ayan. So ayun po. Um, for parents who invest in independent education, helping their children make the right choice is there a right choice. If there is a right choice, is a daunting task. For many, sending kids to independent school is a commitment to giving them the best start. So finding the right fit be it a co-ed or single sex classroom is key. But the only thing as complicated as boys and girls trying to figure out each other is figuring out whether or not they want to attend school together. So given gender stereotypes and differences between the sexes, the question has yet to be settled. Do girls and boys learn better together or separately? So let's find out.
All right, so let's take a look back, a real uh, quick look back once upon a time in the Philippine setup. Okay, so let's try to go back to the 19th century. So during 19th century, it seemed logical as early as the 19th century to separate the girls when they were finally allowed to go to school. Because pre-1800s uh, pre or early 1800s, only boys had access to education. And come 1900s, the shift to co-education began due to financial considerations and gender equality, but with little or no regard at all for education research. That sums up why boys and girls have been going to school together with exceptions. All right, so pinayagan na na maka-join ng mga babae sa setup ng school. However, hindi bangga yung curricula. Hindi masyadong binibigyan ng pansin kung ano yung mga pangangailangan ng mga ating kababaihan. So that's why most of our ladies and girls before prefer not to go na lang. Okay? So let's um, move to... Okay, hold on. Okay, so punta naman tayo sa... 1990s, early 1990s. Okay, so modern research pointed to the advantages of separating the boys from the girls, resulting in a resurgence of interest in single sex education. Alright, so in the United States, kasi parang binabasi natin siya yung type of yung setup ng education natin to the United States. So let's um, take a peek muna doon sa kung anong nangyayari sa United States. So in the United States, there were only four public schools in 1998 that offered single-sex education. By 2006, the number rose to 223. November of 2017, 366. April of 2009, 540. And there are additional of 80 single-sex public schools at as of 2020, kahit nagkaroon na ng pandemic. Okay, so when then-Senator um, Hillary Clinton in 2001 said, the government was looking toward making single gender in education available as an option for all children, not just for children of parents wealthy enough to afford private schools. So ito yung reason. Not only mga well-off families can go to public schools na single sex, but it is, it is open to everyone, all family types. <clears throat> Alright, so single sex versus co-educational schooling, ito yung research at a systematic review. This is considered as the best research commissioned by the U.S. government in 2005. It says, uh, it found out that uh, single sex has better results in math, science, English, and social studies. And it is also not true that co-ed schools turn out more rounded students since these schools tend to perpetuate stereotypes of girls as good in creative arts and boys as well are strong in math, science, and leadership. Okay, so co uh, single sex education both focuses for men and women. Okay, so they have found out through these studies or through this research that um, pagsama-sama ang boys and girls, they have better results for math and they have better results for science, English, and social studies. Okay? Next. Also in single-sex schools, guys, students are given more opportunities to develop without suffering from biases. Alright? So, balik tayo sa Philippines. So then, why do we have a reverse situation in the Philippines? Many single-sex private schools have gone on or are going co-ed at the trend, and the trend continues. So, uh, may si share na ako sa inyo. I am from a from high school elementary. From high school, I was part of a a single-sex um, school set up in the province of Kamsul. And when I went to the when I went to Phil, uh, to Manila. I shifted from co uh, from single sex to co ed, so um, most probably I can relate to to both. All right. So, ano ba yung reason kung bakit tayo nag shift from single sex to co ed? One reason of that is about financial. Okay, about money. Uh, Shempre, most schools are still uh, businesses, so hindi lang naman lahat 
ng parents ay gusto lahat ay papuntahin sa exclusive schools yung mga anak nila. And also, nagkaroon, uh, based doon sa, ito, according to Raul Midoy, uh, Dr. Raul Midoy, Executive Director of Parents for Education Foundation, or what we call PAREF today, and a member of the Association for Single-Sex Education in Asia Philippines, has the following norms about girls and boys. So ito yung box na linalagay natin yung mga kabataan natin. Alright, so let's go through this really quick. Okay, so before John Gray even wrote the best-selling Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, there, these were the norms in the Philippines. So, just a girl in her Sunday best and she'll look just as pretty when you make it to church an hour later. Ganyan daw ang mga babaeng kabataan. Dress a boy in his Sunday best and he'll somehow, somehow find every muddy puddle from your home to the church. So ayan yung norms. Okay, Philippine norms about boys. Okay, second, we have this. When girls play with Barbie and Kendall, they like to dress them up and play house. But when boys play, sorry, that's play, with Barbie and Ken dolls, they like to throw them around like balls. Okay, so medyo magulo nga naman talaga ang mga kabataan lalaki. But not all. Okay, this is just a norm. So next, we have this. Girls turn into women. Guys, I need your opinion to this, na? Girls turn into women and boys turn into bigger boys. Miss Hannah, what can you say about this? <laughs> Sir Aris, what can you say about this? Is it true na mas mabilis mag-mature ang... Kasi nga po. <laughs> Apo. When it, when it comes to maturity po, nung pag sa, siguro po sa pagiging responsible, palagi ko po girls, kasi madalas di ba sa mga na, napapano, mga na, nababasa mga quotes or advice to girls na, ano, find a boy. I find a man, not a boy. Ganun po yung kasi sabi na, <laughs> Um, yes. um, yung pong isang bawa, yung isang lalaki or 20 above na, na lalaki, they can act like a child po. do kahit may edad na sila, parang ganun pa rin po, parang isip bata pa din, ganun. Okay. Parang lumaki lang sila physically, tumangkad lang, ganun. Marami pong ganun eh, parang pagdating po sa responsibility, hindi po sila ganun ka-responsibility. Ay, nangungutan ka ata, Miss Hana. <laughs> Well, guys, just to be fair, <laughs> just to be uh, fair, I'd like to ask the boys, okay, guys, pagtanggol mo naman, pagtanggol, pagtanggol naman natin ang ating, ano, ang ating baluarte. Can we hear from the boys? Any volunteer from any group? Hi, boys! Sorry, I'm for group 7. Sige po, group 7, come on, take it away. Sir, sa akin po ay ka-counterparty po yung sagot nila. <laughs> <laughs> sige, sir. Well, sige, sir. Uh, kasi, sir, nakadepende po yan. Apa, nakadepende po sa environment na kinalikahan ng isang lalaki. Ano po, sir? Kung siya po ay ni-raise ng isang pamilya na maging uh, responsible man, then paglaki po niya, ganun po yung mangyayari. Or kung uh, nakikita po niya, kung uh, pinakita po example ng kanyang tatay, ay pagiging ano talaga yung sense of being a man then makukuha po niya yung gusto siya po ay lumaki so depende po siya sir sa kinalakihang environment ng isang batang lalaki thank tama. you po tama maraming maraming salamat well you guys have you guys both have a point at maraming maraming salamat for sharing your thoughts uh, about this okay so let's move on guys again norms lang ito okay so ngayon na meron na tayong um, at least a vivid picture kung ano yung norms ng setup ng education or yung pananaw ng mga parents or ng society about young young teens or young learners. So I guess it's about time for us to know when to draw the line. Kung kailan natin dapat uh, ihinto or kailan natin dapat sabihin na sandali, teka lang, this is more hurtful than it's helpful. Okay, ano ba yung mga hurtful at ano ba yung mga helpful pa na mga norms? So we have to uh, find out about uh, more about it. Ayan, so a classic research conducted in the 1970s and 1980s 
Boverman et al. in 1972 and Spence et al. 1984 found that women were evaluated as more communal and expressive than men and that men were believed to be more competent, agentic, and instrumental than women. And also, these differences extend beyond evaluations to beliefs about occupations and appropriate roles. So, ito ni natin natin gender roles and stereotypes. People who are not labeled feminine or masculine enough are termed androgynous individuals because they have a mixture of the traits traditionally assigned for one sex or the other. This is from BEM of 1974. Now, let's move on. According to the Office of the High Commissioner of Human for Human Rights, this is in the UK, a gender stereotype is a generalized view or perception about attributes or characteristics that are ought to be possessed by women and men or the roles that are should be performed by men or women. A gender stereotype is therefore harmful when it limits the capacity of women and men to develop their personal attributes or professional skills and to take decisions about their lives and plans. Okay, so gender stereotype becomes so harmful kung ito na yung nag-dedictate sa atin kung saan tayo dapat pumuntang profession, kung ano lang yung course na pwede natin itake, kung hanggang saan lang akad academically ang kaya natin um, i-grab, di ba? Uh, as uh, going back to the report of uh, of our first reporter, Teacher Aris, uh, it was said that um, most of the bosses sa education goes to men. Okay, so ito yung stereotype. But also, nafeminize naman yung mga teachers na hindi pa nag-hold ng office to be women. Okay? So ito na yung medyo harmful effect no gender stereotype in achieving uh, academically. All right, gender stereotypes affect girls and also boys around the world. Hindi lang sa Philippines ito problema kundi around the world regardless of their country's level of development and are encouraged by society at large from parents to teachers. So there's a movement now going on na ini-encourage ang mga parents and teachers to move away from these stereotypes. This is one of the main conclusions of the WHO John Hopkins University Global Early Adolescent Study. And although some may consider this trivial, it has very detrimental consequences for girls and boys from a very early age, reducing their aspirations and limiting their career options. So, yun nga, nakabox. Lalaki ka, engineer ka. Babae ka, teacher ka. Alright, so let's move on. Okay, so let's take um, time to compare both sides. Kung pa, paano ba tayo, uh, paano natin tingnan yung single sex and co-ed schools? Okay. Single sex. Uh, please mute all our devices. Okay. Maraming salamat po. Single sex, school can be better tailored lessons and curriculum to students. Ayun nga yung sinabi ni Ma'am Anneline kanina. And also, it's hard to be all things to all people, right? So boys and girls learn differently and single-sex schools can focus their effort and all their resources uh, properly or most appropriately and able to accommodate these differences without a compromise. So hindi, hindi uh, nalilimitahan yung admin ng school kung ano ba yung mga activities, extracurriculars na best fit or best directly to uh, a gender, a particular gender. Now, punta naman tayo kay co-ed schools. Research shows that for up to 80% of students, both boys and girls, their brains are similar enough that they respond to the same teaching style. And also academics are enriched with boys and girls. Uh, they are exposed to each other's thinking and experiences in the classroom. So, ang nangyayari, nagkakaroon ng sharing nagkakaroon ng influences, different influences yung mga bata dito sa co-ed school. Ayun naman yung sinasabi ng mas nakakarami kanina na nagbibigay ng kanilang information. Ano pa rin lang opinion. 
Alright, so let's move on. For single sex, ito nga pala ay ang pedagogical arguments. In the areas boys and girls often do well in, whether it is an intellectual, physical, or behavioral domain, they aren't held back by the other gender. Okay, so dahil nga walang ibang nakakakita, sila-sila lang, puro lalaki, puro babae, okay, hindi sila na held back ng mga inhibitions nila. Hindi sila nahihiya na sandali, yung crush ko baka makikita akong ganito yung tsura ko or sandali yung ano ko yung dinidiskartehan ko dun sa, sa gilid ba ako anong isipin kapag ito yung sabihin ko or if I love too hard or kung meron akong puputok na tagyawat so things like that so having boys and girls in the classroom creates balance ito naman yung sa co-ed no? which benefits both where boys excel they raise the standard for girls and vice versa okay diversity allows students to stretch and challenge each other. So, ayan yung argument naman. Pedagogically, uh, uh, pedag pedagogical arguments ni co-ed schools. Okay, how about naman doon sa developmental argument? Ito naman yun. Sa single sex, in adolescence, kids can be more themselves without sexual competition. So, they can um, develop more without yung yung pressure sa kanila na sandali. Bakit ako, ganito na nangyayari sa katawan ko? Bakit sa kanya iba? Kasi pare-parehas kayo nang nanaranasan. So, walang pressure, walang peer pressure. However, for co-ed schools, as Aristotle said, humans are social animals. Today, that means living in a co-ed world, not only in a classroom setup. Single-sex schools artificially shelter kids from this reality. So, according to um, this developmental argument, yung co-ed school, uh, yung single-sex daw, nagkakaroon ng parang invisible uh, umbrella na kung saan sinishelter natin yung bata sa mga dapat mararanasan niya. And which is, uh, dare I say, dapat natural lang na maranasan in a real world scenario. Okay, so next one. Kids can try different things in single-sex education and explore unique interests and skills without the influence of social expectations stemming from gender roles. So, anbawa all girls school yan. So, pwede siyang mag-try ng different things. Pwede, siyang, pwede niyang gawin yung mga usual na ginagawa ng mga lalaki without the judgment of the boys around because they aren't there. However, for co-ed schools naman daw, students can learn to be tolerant of people who are different than them and to treat each other with respect. Students are exposed to both male and female roles, uh, role models. So dito, na natututo tayo, we're being honed na we shouldn't lack of things na, na we're not so uh, oriented with. We shouldn't uh, take this matter simply or we shouldn't joke about this. So, ito yung tinuturo ng co-ed schools, okay, for developmental arguments. Next one. Okay. So, ayan na po ang ating last slide for comparison ng single-sex and co-ed schools. Going to a single-sex school doesn't prelude students from interacting with the opposite sex, whether through extracurriculars or outside of school. By the time kids go out into the world of relationships, they are strong and fully formed individuals. Okay, yung argument naman ni single sex, si girl or si boy were formed, developmentally formed, well na bago pa to enter into what we call the next step in their life. So, buo na siya. Hindi siya yung napilit na binuo. Okay? Sabi naman dito kay co-ed schools, schools and work aside, co-ed schools offer students more chances to build comfort, talking, and interacting with the other sex. Okay, so medyo nalilinawan na po ba tayo mga ka-classmates or medyo lalo tayong na persuade <laughs> Alright, so let's answer this following questions. Are girls more intelligent than boys? Hmm, medyo ano to ah, controversial to ah. So let's try to answer that. Hindi ako kundi sa research, according to our research. Okay, so let's try. So according to research conducted in the UK, an analysis of boys and girls IQs showed that girls had a higher score by 1.2 points at age 7. Take note, young, youngsters, okay, young learners. By age 11, this difference had narrowed to 0.8 points. And then by age 16, 
the boys' score had overtaken the girls' score by 1.5 points. So this analysis was based on a long, longitudinal sample of 17,419 children in the National Child Development Study and published in Psychology Today. Ang resources po natin yan ay nasa baba po ng ating slides later on. If you would like to, you know, uh, delve on that more. Okay, so ang studies na ito ay nagsasabi na yung mga bata, mga babaeng bata, and of course, are, uh, their IQs are higher. However, kapag dumating na po ng adolescent period, ang boys ay kumahago. Okay, so in 2019, 25.3% of girls achieved grades 7 to 9 in, C, uh, in GCSES compared to 18.6% of boys. The equivalent results in 2018 for English and Maths only were 24.6% for girls and 18.5% for boys. In 2019, 25.5% of girls achieved A plus or A grades at a level at A level compared to 25.4% for boys. The equivalent results in 2018 were 26.0% for girls and 26.4 for boys. Kung may kita nyo hindi naman siya masadong malayo, pero of course ang girls ay nag-aachieve talaga when it terms of academics. All right, so are girls less confident than boys? Another controversial question guys. So let's take a look. Okay, so based doon sa mga pinakita ko kanina na, na figures, um, a 2019 study of 4,000 pupils by GL Assessment in UK suggested that at age 11, only 25% of girls consider themselves very clever. <laughs> okay, this compares to 34% for boys even though girls outperform by 8 to 10% in SATs. Okay, so uh, in this study, yung mga, mga girls, yung data, it shows na they are excelling more, okay? However, when it, when it uh, comes to the question of confidence, okay, self-expression, 27% lang ang nagsasabi na they consider themselves as very clever. However, yung mga lalaki, although napapag-iwanan sila, they think of themselves as very clever. 34% of them. There you go. So let's move on to the advantages. Let's talk about them. Okay, ang single sex, ang mga advantages niya ito, less competition, number one. Specific, uh, specially tailored programs for individual genders. Nasabi na natin yung kanina. Two genders have different biology. Okay, so less attraction towards the opposite sex. Single sex classes break stereotypes. Okay, so these are the advantages. Now let's go to the disadvantages. Now, for the disadvantages, we only have three. Students get less practice. Wala silang real life scenario or simulations only. Puro simulation. Less understanding of the world. Bakit? Walang, walang normality. Yeah, walang parang sense of normality because they are being limited to their peers. Kung babae, sa babae lang sila nakikisalamua. Kung sa lalaki, sa lalaki lang sila nakikisalamua. And less experience in life. Of course, they get less experience with communicating and with relating to the opposite sex. So, ayan naman yung disadvantage. Now, punta naman tayo sa sa co-ed. Ano naman ang mga advantages ni co-ed? Number one, Students receive more access to diversity. Okay, number two, it bridges the equality gap. Okay, na hindi lang dapat porque babae ka eh uh, pagbibigyang ka palagi. You have to keep up. Okay, hindi pa di paglalaki ka dapat lagi ka magaling. No, you have to be considerate of your peers as well. Reduces the financial cost, of course, uh, for uh, for parents who cannot afford to go, you know, places or to move around places, they can opt to go to co-ed education. Number three, uh, number four, gives opportunities for socialization and prep up students for the real world, which they will have later on in life, which is a co-ed world. Next one is, ano naman ang mga disadvantages ng co-ed education? We have mixed gender classes create sexual destruction. 
So yung sinasabi nga ni ma'am na medyo, di ba, ito nang yung rampaging hormones. Lahat naman tayo nagdaan sa period na ito, kahit naman ako, hindi ako exception dyan. So naiintindihan natin yan lahat. When we say sexual destruction, okay, we are attracted so much and we couldn't explain bakit tayo ganito at this age. And it also forces students to learn in unnatural ways. Okay? And increase in bullying and cyber crimes. Dahil nga may mga may mga threats, may mga opportunities na makipagkilala sa mga hindi naman uh, masyadong uh, dapat pinagkakatiwalaan na, na teens. So, nagkakaroon ng increased bullying and cyber crimes. Okay. This one. Now, this ends our report for today, guys. So, let me end by saying that Many students do perform well with co-ed, with co-ed schools, but some do better in same-sex schools. So society can benefit from preferences and diversity, so let's offer options. And of course, <clears throat> as a teacher, let's help break any biases and gender stereotypes present in our classroom. Remember, society plays a great part in forming us as individuals. So our biases and stereotypes as a person is just a product of the society we grew up in the past. So let's filter the good from the bad and avoid the bad to crawl in to the next generation. So kung wala po tayong mga katanungan, meron po tayong mga questions. I'd like to welcome my colleagues, Sir Aris and Ma'am Hannah, to join us in the conversation. Yes, po. Any uh, questions, po? Yes, po. Good afternoon. Po ba? Any so questions, guys? For the report of Group 4. Thank you so much, Sir Chris and Ma'am Hannah. May question po kayo. Ready ready po si Sir Chris sumagot ng inyong mga tanong. Bakit I understand na? that the presentation, the report of group 3 and 4 are all very clear. Therefore, you may send your three questions to your classmates. <laughs> and you, uh, as per uh, request by one of your classmates, uh, can you send your uh, presentation via um, uh, group chat for the uh, as reference for your uh, uh, quizzes? Is that okay with the group one, two, three, up to four? Okay, yes, po, sir. Okay, yes, po. Po, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you have sent it to uh, group chat. Okay, yes, no? Yes, po. Sir, um, okay. siguro, sir, uh, siguro, sir, PDF form na lang po para po hindi maano yung mga spacing PDF file po lahat ang isusend yes. natin. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. And for that, congratulations, group 3 and 4. Uh, see you next Congrats. Saturday and Sunday for group 6, uh, 5 and 6. Saturday, 5. Saturday morning, 6, Saturday afternoon, and the last reporter, Sunday morning for group 7. In the afternoon, submission of your requirements for the next Saturday, sending your grades via your messenger. Okay? For that, again, congratulations and... Uh, See you next week. Marat, salamat po, sir. Guys, thank you so much thank for you. taking your time and to be, for being patient. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Thank you, din thank po, po, sir. Salamat po. Congrats, sir, Aris. Congrats, sir. Thank you, 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 sir.